Hello everyone, welcome to the Char Shot Gamescast. It's your week, friends gather around, talk about the games we've been playing, things going on in their lives. Today I'm with me, Justin. What is up? And special... Yeah, I figured. Uh, <laughs> and special guest, we have Patrick. Hey, pleasure to be on the show. Uh, do you have anything to plug or anything? <laughs> nah, I'm not a, I'm not a famous YouTuber like you guys. <laughs> Um, I do some. I've been doing flight simulator videos. that are more educational if you want to be bored. That's cool. Yeah, those seem interesting. Yeah. Oh, real quick. Did you did you watch mine, Justin? No, I literally haven't had a chance okay. yet. Because you sent him, and then the electrician showed up, and then I was dealing with all that. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, your pictures look good, by the way. Thanks. Right, there will anyway. be more soon. <laughs> I your... took this off topic to as long as I did. Is your electrician done now? Yes. That's what I was. I was going to uh, say that as my first thing when it got to me, but well, hey, yeah. If you want to just bury now. the lead, sure. I mean, uh, the the electric the electrical stuff in the basement is officially done, so we can actually like finish now. <laughs> and you know, we've been very motivated, so <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it'll take no time at this point. Um, but yeah, this weekend is going to be like drywalling the office and uh, cleaning up. A lot of that. We still have to wait for my father-in-law in order to put the ceiling in, uh, but that's not that big a deal. There's a lot of other stuff we can do before that. So yeah, shouldn't be too much longer. And then we can, you know, not host a party. <laughs> yeah. No, but anyway, it's looking it's looking nice, Justin. So you know, be proud of what you're doing. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Like it's been it's taken so long that like I don't fully appreciate the progress. Because to me, it's been, it's looked about the same for like two months now. <laughs> but, like, I see, you know, the little things. Um, like, the, the that uh, light in the stairwell was actually a big one. Because uh, for people that don't have me on Facebook and wouldn't see this, um, before we had, like, this, that the ceilings, like, leading down into the basement are, like, the same ceiling height as the first four. So imagine, like, you know, normal first floor height, probably, what, like, seven, eight feet, something like that, but going downstairs. So it's about, like, probably 12 feet from the stairs to the ceiling, (laughs) and there was just a dinky little little ceiling light with a fluorescent bulb in it, and we're like, yeah, we're we're never changing this light bulb. (laughs) So uh, one of the things we had the electrician do was put it like we got a just a nice uh, hanging pendant that hangs down about four feet. Um, and so, you know, when you change that out, now we can actually reach the the light if we need to change it or whatever. And it just looks really <clears> nice. <throat> um, so it's kind of a nice feature when you come down. And I think that was a, a big change. Um, you know, sometimes it's those little things that you really appreciate when it's been so long. <laughs> Let, let Patrick go first. I don't want to talk. I <laughs> well, I, well I, so how do you want me to lead this off? Uh, I know I took it off topic for the last, like, uh, Just five minutes. what have you been up to? What games you've been playing? That kind of thing. Yeah, so it's, I guess you could say it's a little depressing. I haven't been playing as much the last week because I think Justin can relate to this and maybe all of us. We've just been burned out with everything and work where you just kind of sit there and feel like just watching a show instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said, I have been. I got back into Battlefield Five because some friends play it, so it's like part of my social, I guess, network at this point. So like at least mm. a game you could play with some people. Um, I'm almost close to finally beating Ghost of Tsushima. That's one nice. of my game of the year contenders right now. <laughs> um, I got in the flight simulator, which <laughs> I, I didn't expect to get into as much as I did, but it's just really, it, it's really described. You're just flying. That's that's the whole premise. But it's just like the way they recreate the Earth and just seeing all these famous yeah. sights from the air. It's just really fascinating. So it's like the only way I get to travel this year, it seems like. Because if I try to travel in real life, I'd just be put in quarantine for two weeks. Right, yeah. <laughs> and trying to... So I'm like, well, what a great vacation this is in the hotel. So There is a marvel to it. Like, it. I mean, it's it's bad topography for the most part. No, like... But so, it's still cool that it's like the real places. I, I give you a great example. So, like, it's very... I, I get why, or a good example is where Justin lives, and I live went to high. You know, I went to high school with Justin. That's how I know him. And middle school. And were you TJ as well? Yeah, we okay. met in seventh grade. I I was actually thinking <laughs> about that today. I really was. I couldn't remember because I know in high school we hanged out a lot more by mm-hmm. then. So that was 
anyway, but anyway, yeah. so I flew over Jeff City, and the way the technology works, is there's going to be some flaws, so it has issues sometimes with topography, <laughs> like, so with the Missouri River, it's, like, almost, like, t- three or five meters higher than the Jefferson City itself, like, it looks like <laughs> City is built, like, a giant levee <laughs> to the Mississippi River, <laughs> and then it shows, like, this bridge doing, like, a 90-degree drop <laughs> once it crosses wow. the river, uh, so it's really funny, but when it does, like, New York City or, like, bigger and more famous places obviously it's a lot more 100 percent accurate and they'll hand they actually go in handcrafted the stuff which makes it kind of neat because you see buildings recreated with the 3d <laughs> or sorry the cgi's 3d model and normally doesn't look very accurate but then the ones they handcrafted like the recreated like the eiffel tower and stuff and it looks breathtaking um yeah, it's, anyway it's just kind of fun to mess around with and then do they uh, have the arch in st louis like is that recreated yeah, yeah that because i would love to fly through it <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't do that. I did a. Fl- I actually record a video. I send that to you later. Flying over since just guess my hometown, but it was at night. And I could, the other one flaw I've seen, and I'm trying to be fair because what they did was pretty breathtaking and like you know unheard of to recreate the Earth. But like when I went over the arch, um, I could tell the satellite imagery they were using were several years out of date because they've redone the whole park that goes over the interstate now. Mm-hmm. When you fly over in the game, that park's not there. Like it stops at the interstate. And then restarts again in the courthouse. It's so hard to describe. You haven't been there for others, but it's basically um, the arch in the courthouse is a national park. However, you had you used to have to cross like a you know like this road. It was it's, it's technically a highway, but you know you you're on a bridge going over the highway. But you know it wasn't really fun to walk. Now it's like a park that completely goes over the highway, so it's like completely covered. And the imagery didn't have this. Like that'd be the other thing. Some of the imagery in areas are out of date. But granted, you know they've probably been working this game for at least five ten years, so it's just obviously. Yeah, you know, it'd be interesting over time in their 10-year plan, they're going to update it with, you know, more, you know, like, you know, like up-to-date imagery. Because, you know, areas change all the time, obviously. So. <clears throat> it's kind of and, surprised they wouldn't do, like, a new, you know, Bing's map pass before putting this out. Because, <laughs> like, you know, Google Maps, they update theirs every five years or so. So, like, if they're about to use the, the Bing maps in a video game, I would imagine they'd be a lot more motivated to go out there and get new imagery. <laughs> Actually, they, I think... I, I'm curious because they're, they're supposed to do a 10-year plan of monthly update. I mean, monthly, like, content updates, they say. Obviously, there's always going to be patches and work to make it more, you know, you know whatever issues there are, stabilize. Um, but, if, you know, it would be curious. I mean, it's interesting. Mm. The one downside is the model is not very consumer-friendly. Like, because, so, like, you get the $60. I mean, the base game is very fair. A good example. So $60 for the base game. I got the deluxe, which is ninety, and the reason and the reason they add more planes, but so like the base game's got like, I think twenty, it's like thirty <laughs> planes and twenty airports, and then for the deluxe you get five more planes and five more airports for thirty dollars more, mm. and then for another thirty, so sixty total, then you get five more on top of that for each. So it's only you're paying the game twice just to get ten more of each when you got like twenty thirty in the base game, so. And then when they add like new airports by third party content developers, and it's like usually fourteen, fifteen dollars to twenty. For, like, a also, you're paying for plane. digital landmarks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of get it. Like the way I get why, but it's like I think for anyone that just wants to fly around and have a little fun, sixty dollars. Um, I I like flying in general, so I wanted the the you know Chicago Hare Airport recreated, which mm-hmm. is a ninety dollar package because that's my base airport. So I enjoyed it for that and some of the other stuff. But it's like. It's like a shame if you want to fly like some you know some planes like the seven um, eight seven the Dreamliner and that's in the hundred twenty dollar one so it's just kind of like you know it really comes down to consumer but just be mind you know people who have been thinking about it haven't gotten just be mindful of that pricing structure because that kind of caught me off guard since it's really the first kind of flight simulator I'm really trying out mm-hmm. as it's like yeah. comes out not like ten years later <coughs> pick it up five dollars on Steam and give up after that <laughs> yeah. So, I just uh, got it off the Game Pass. That's just where I yeah. played it. I was debating. I actually signed up for that. But I decided just to, to get... Because <laughs> I wanted the Deluxe Edition. So it's like you get Game Pass and you still pay $90 anyway to get it. So I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, I think the game... Like, usually Game Pass gives you uh, discounts on the games if you actually buy... Like, if you buy the games that are on Game Pass, you get them at a discounted rate. Mm. Um, I didn't know they, that. They do I assume that, they would not do that yet, though, since it just came out. But probably over time. Yeah, I don't know if the see. Deluxe version was on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, otherwise, um, that's actually what I've been playing the last week or so. But you know, I still need to finish like Last of Us Two and Judgment on PS4. And I played Fallout 76 early in the summer, not recently. Mm-hmm. 
So that's been my game. Just kind of waiting for Cyberpunk at this point and the new Yakuza game. How far are you in The Last of Us 2? Mm, I'm on day three. Well, day three again. So With Abby? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I kind of... I, <laughs> no, I'm trying to really explain. No, because I, I had the I, I had the same I'm, I'm trying to as bait you. Thomas here. That's that's right. why I asked. No, no. Let me put this. I, I think it's a very good game, and I really like it. It's just, it's even it's 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 got, it, the first game's dark, but at least has some light moments. It hasn't been any of those moments in the second game, minus some flashback scenes, and it's just kind of. I love the flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just kind of it's a very depressing game. It's just something like with everything going on this year, it's been a little harder to play. Mm-hmm. That type of game than usual, despite being well. Re- I still think it's a good game. It's just I think the new character just wasn't <clears throat> fleshed out very well. <laughs> See, I I think that they screwed up Ellie's entire story, and they did way better with Abby. That's interesting. I I think the problem with Ellie, it's easier to like her story more because she already had a full game developed, so it's just mm-hmm. kind of fell on the top. And while I like the new, you know, the new character story, it just seems like. They're, tra- they're trying to put a lot in there, like you know, you meet some of her friends, but they really yeah. just they're it's, just there, and it's then so just go long, away. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, I went, oh, who's this guy that's like banging every woman in the in the village? Like, why don't we learn more about him? <laughs> it's like, oh, bye. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's certainly moments where it's just like it's underwritten. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, I wouldn't say it's a rush game. I think it's just kind of. They feel like doing it, but they there was just too much story. Game. They didn't know how to complete it. I feel they like. didn't know how to cut what they needed to cut. They could have cut yeah. a bunch of content from that, and it would have been perfectly fine. Yeah, I'd rather just. I get what they're trying to do. Have this other story, so you feel like El- what Ellie's doing isn't fully justified, you know, or like you know, like oh, okay, like you know, everyone knows Joe had a dark past, and it kind of caught up with him, and it's really more like a revenge story for Ellie. Yeah, but. But, you know, it's like, it's like, okay, I get it, you're trying to show, like, this other side, but it's like, you know, all you're making it is, is like, they're both suck. It's like, <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm not really rooting for anyone at this point, it's just kind of like... Yeah, I was with you there as well, but, like, um, I don't think this game had a lot of, like, any protagonists, but then yeah. I, I, I actually came around to Abby, I guess I'm in the minority for a lot of people. I don't hate her, like, I don't get... <clears throat> Like, it's really disgusting. I mean, that's just the gaming community. People get so emotional. It's like, you know, want to threaten in the voice. I'm like, you want to get mad? Get mad at the director for writing the damn thing. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. That's kind of my main thing you know, is with that. It's like Jar Jar Binks. Like, you know, you know, get mad at the character in George Lucas, not the actor that played him. He just did what he was told. Yeah. I mean, people are also getting mad at uh, Neil Druckmann. And, like, they're like, how, how dare you write Ellie like this? You don't know her story. And he's like. I, I Bro, made, I made the her. character. <laughs> yeah. Like I know her arc. I know who she is more than you do. Yeah, don't tell me how my character would act. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't so it's think... like I don't understand that either. Yeah, see, I, I'm quick. with I'm with you there. Where it's like uh, the motivations are justified, but I don't like the motivations. <laughs> right, yeah, it's like, one thing like, to not like the choices. It's another to say that they're wrong. Yeah, right? that's what I. That's what I hate, and that's like the whole Star Wars Last Jedi with our friend chris yeah <laughs> uh, different chris that we don't probably talk much he's a big star wars nerd it's like in his world like he has this probably idea what star wars should be and i'm not against that but it's like because it didn't play out that way he thinks his version's like the right version i'm like it's a fan fiction it's a fiction story you know mm-hmm. you're not the creator you're just a fan that adds his own theories on top it's just like Get real. He's. I don't. I don't think you stayed the night. He spent the night before my wedding ranting about Star Wars. <laughs> oh my god! So I <laughs> while saw, we were playing a game, was this before Last Jedi? After Last Jedi? <sighs> or before? Uh, I think it was before. 2017. So this is before it came out because Mary. I came think out, so. Yeah, yeah. I think. Or I mixed in the years. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fifteen, seventeen, nineteen. Yeah, two years. So. Yeah, I think it was like it was coming out the next month or something. Yeah, because like remember talking about the wedding. He was like all hype. He had all these theories. Yeah. And, and then the day of, it's just like, it's like a complete meltdown on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I mean, Star Wars is dead to me. <laughs> they said he like went he to the bathroom like summer. Yeah, I know it's just so. And it, I don't call it a great movie. It's like Disney did not hire you. Yeah. <laughs> Disney will not hire you. <laughs> um, be that being made, maybe you write better than some of them. I won't go in that far in the weeds, but everyone has their own idea of, of what something should be. Yeah. You're free, you're free to write your fan fiction, but it's not going to be better than what the creator came up with. Exactly. Uh, oh, yeah, but back to games. Yeah, this is what I've been playing. Um, 
I didn't mention I'm a big Yakuza series fan, so if you ever need a guy to talk on that, I'm your guy. So Yeah, I got into the Yakuza games for a while there. I love the... It's I'm, such a... It, it's an arcade beat em up so obviously it's not for everyone, but just yeah. it's such a goofy series that's just so fun. To yeah, I, ha- I hopped in when Zero came out, because that was like when all the hype was coming out. Uh... Oh, man. I actually got into <laughs> it um, when they had Yakuza 4 as a PlayStation Plus game, like I think in... 2014 or 15 that's when i got into it Mm -hmm. and then you know found out five wasn't even out and then they finally brought it out but because sega didn't want to bring it over anymore because like long story (laughs) short sega really botched the first few games bringing over like just yeah 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 like yakuza 3 they took out hostess clubs they changed the wording it wasn't well done you know because they were like afraid about you know american audiences even though if you're playing a game completely subtitled you're probably much more open to different cultures by that point (laughs) right so you're not going to get upset as much. Mm-hmm. But that being made, they're like, after Yakuza 4, it bombed because they didn't advertise or do anything. And then, like, Sony saw potential, like, there was a cult following because the Sony was a lot more in touch with the U.S. audience than Sega was at the time. They paid Sega to bring the game over, and I think that really did a lot better than expected, and then they finally brought Yakuza 0 and did the marketing and then kind of really took off from there. So Yeah. But, I they really on... took Sony and them buying Atlas to get their crap together and realize yeah. people want more than just Sonic here in the U.S. from them. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, Yakuza is probably Sega's best franchise. Well, they finally bought Star Fantasy 2 you know, online, which, you know, is a diff- has its own cult following as well. And that took, like, eight, nine years after it came out to figure that out, despite mm-hmm. how people wanted it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have, uh, I finished off Kiwami 1 and 2, I have 3, I still need to play through, and then I have 4 and 5 and 6, and Judgment still left to play through. Oh, that's so, so much. I've beat them all. Yeah. I haven't, be- I bought the remaster, I haven't replayed the remasters yet, I just won it for my collection, and yeah, I it was a good it. deal for yeah. three games, but my personal favorite would probably be 4 and 5, even though I kind of started, it's a little more biased, because obviously they've always rebuilt on top of each game. Mm-hmm. I mean, story, first one's probably... For, the first story in the first one is probably my favorite, but five is the Pretty best good. overall game because it has multiple cities, well, like areas of each city, mm. and it's just you know it's really cool how they took all these different stories and interconnected them at the end. Like it worked yeah. pretty well, surprisingly. So that, have you uh, called, have you had a oh, chance to play six yet? Six? Oh yeah. yeah, I beat six. Yeah, that was good. I, I wouldn't say the weakest one for me would be three. I think. Yeah. Um, and granted, I, I need to replay 3, the remaster, because I know they've added back all the stuff they cut out, because I played the PS3 version originally. Mm-hmm. Um, I like 6, it was good, it's just kind of, you know, it, it's kind of weird, you go from 5, which had multiple characters and cities, just back to Kiryu, which is, from that point was nice, but there's only like two locations, so it's just kind of like, you mm-hmm. know, it, it, it's hard, it's like, you. I think they want to bring it back down to Earth, and which what they did, but just still, you kind of go from like all that. It's like going from like GTA five to GTA three or something like, like, you know, you went backwards a little bit and, and I get why they did it from a story wise is really well done. And it's a good story. It's just kind of like, it's like, Oh, I miss seeing some of the characters from the past games. that didn't really show up or just had a really brief cameo Interesting. when they usually more prominent. <clears throat> so. Cool. I need, uh, I'm looking forward to finally beating those at some point in my life. Uh, I don't know oh, they when have, they have the new uh, <laughs> RPG one that's coming out. If you stop playing destiny long enough, yeah, well, my clan we needs should, me. We should uh, talk to our friend Daniel. He's a big Destiny 2 player. so I play it too, or have, but not recently. I'm so. planning to run... Get in your clan. <laughs> I'm planning to run a flawless uh, Last Wish this weekend with the clan. So. I need to get back into it, because I played it when it came out, and then just kind of dropped in, and I haven't really picked it up since they've done so much. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of overwhelming to jump back into. It I is. Tried. I, I did. I was like, oh, it, I didn't beat the game originally, so I was trying to do that, and I had no mm. idea where the hell I was going. So. Well, good news, guys. They're taking out a lot of content, so there's <laughs> not going to be so much for you to do anymore. Uh, yeah, that Beyond Light expansion seems strange. I don't understand that. Yeah, uh, I hope expansion. People, people are expecting Beyond Light to be basically Destiny 3 right now. And hmm. with the amount of content they're taking out, it better well be. It's actually going to be Destiny 1.5. I mean, oh, they so are bringing in Destiny 1 stuff, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, going backwards. But, so they're basically um, adapting the Kingdom Hearts model. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Don't say that. Don't say it. Don't say <laughs> I, that. I, am a, I have played all that series. Well, the main series. I, I, can't, I haven't played all the... I played one, 
the one at what was the one after one? I can't remember. Two. No, that wasn't. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! The Chain DS of Memories. One? Yeah, Chain of Memories. Memories. I got to the end. I didn't finish that. And then I played half of two, and then I was like, I'm done. Come on, Patrick. This is the Kingdom Hearts series. Two doesn't come after one. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> no, just like three is the twelfth game or something like that. I, I still, I still can't believe they sold. It at, I don't know. It was full price. It was like thirty bucks. Like the debt. The demo of three, you know, with two point eight, you know, it's like the pre the this little prequel story. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that had multiple things with it. It, it did, it did, but it's just kinda like the whole thing. It had one of the to... best Kingdom Hearts games, Dream Drop Distance. I actually wanna play that one day just to... Because my favorite non mainline series was the uh, one in PSP, which I haven't had a brain fart. Really? Game. Birth oh, by that, Sleep. That was a good one. It had the combat from the from the PS two games the first time. So I didn't. It, it was okay on PSP, but I tried to play it in the 2.5 collection, and the worlds just felt so empty, like you know, blown up on yeah. the big screen. I know that's. I've seen that with other PSP games. Like, I remember, like I played GTA Liberty City Stories, which was like a prequel to three, mm-hmm. and they did a pretty good job bringing it in. But it's like the PSP was pretty revolutionary at the time, but it really needed the R2 button, like a second button. Oh yeah. And it just really struggled with that. And it only had one camera, so it's like they did the best they could. But it's like when you go from, like, you know, a true, you know, like I have it right here, like, you know, joystick with both analogs and both L1 and R2, you know, L1 and L2, mm-hmm. it, it really adds a lot more depth to the gameplay, which, you know, that's what's kind of missing. Or it's, like, more complicated. You have to, like, hold something, then touch something else. And then they made the Vita and still didn't give it an R2 or L2. <laughs> no. Uh, they gave it, it a touchback. Yeah. Yeah, it was a touchback. The Vita was honestly I think the Vita is a very underrated system. It just I think so too. I think it was it just never good. caught on in the West. Yeah. So it did well yeah, but the the PS4 remote play was goofy. I still remember one day when Peter was playing Destiny One on Vita and he kept like <laughs> he was trying to do the touchback stuff because Destiny needs the R two and L two a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was really yeah. clunky. <laughs> well, it, and the other issue, I almost feel like that technology not the Vita, the remote play. It's still not really ready yet. Like I know you have Google Stadia now trying to do it, like the the streaming. Assistant. Microsoft's X Cloud seems to be pretty solid so far. That's good because I know Steam like they, did, they had the PS4 remote. remote play on PC as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it again had the same streaming stability issues, even when you're in network as well, like the same house. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna try X Cloud, but you know I'm always home, so I don't need to. <laughs> right, exactly. Now that we're always home, we don't need any of this. Right, like now is not the time to put out a streaming service this portable well, Justin, gaming did you see how i got like i bought two monitors oh and God. two rokus in my living room so i got like three screens now like a yeah. sports book <laughs> and you only watch sports on them no no i had i had games in new york on one of them last night oh i mean i pay hbo i better get my money's worth yeah so. oh kitty where are you going he went he wants he wants uh, uh he wants board. to climb up top on that shelf there he, he probably did. does he got on the fridge last night I saw that. Okay, your butt's on my face. Oh. Oh, cat butt. No! Oh my god, dude. Oh, that was almost bad. <laughs> I heard something crack. It was my chair. The the uh, the uh headrest moves. Mm. And he oh, doesn't know okay. that. <laughs> I actually thought, yeah, it, it sounded a lot worse at first. <laughs> yeah. You should put him on the Justin cat cam. I don't have it anymore. Oh, it didn't really on. work. No. It wouldn't stay. It, yeah. I'm going to set it back up in the basement um, when I have a better setup for it. But. You should create the Brook cam. <laughs> you don't want to see it, what she's up to. She'd be, it'd just be her on Tumblr looking at cats. Uh, for a while, it was just her playing Harvest Moon all the time. <laughs> With cats? Uh, she got a cat, yeah. <laughs> Good. Should have had one in the bathroom when she locked herself in there that one time. <laughs> oh god! Uh, this, just the idea of a camera in the bathroom is just a little yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. All right, don't be Big Brother. Right. Um. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for me. So. <laughs> right, <laughs> Justin. What are you okay. to? Uh, I also actually haven't been playing too much because uh, I've been busy <clears> in the basement, but um, I don't think I played any Avengers this past week. What? Uh, no, that's, no, that's a, lie. a lie. I did I did one mission with a friend uh, Saturday night, I think. Um, because I hadn't been playing with him, because for one, he hasn't beaten the story yet. 
Um, but also he's playing in brutal difficulty. And so I was like, yeah, like, I don't, I, I got excited for you to have the game so we could do multiplayer, but I don't think I'm ever going to play with you. <laughs> um, but he asked if I wanted to run a villain sector. So I was like, all right, I'll see. Like, maybe it'll be okay. Um, so I jumped in and he, uh, he didn't have all the characters unlocked, so I couldn't play as Thor. <laughs> but that was fine. Um, we ran the villain sector. It was the, uh, the Taskmaster one. And it went okay. Uh, like, the, the brutal difficulty wasn't as bad as I thought, except the computer players were being stupid. But the Taskmaster fight was hard because, like, the, basically the way they do the difficulty change is they just give everyone a bunch of shield. So, like, it's really not that different as far as, like, the, you know, the attack patterns and stuff. They just hit harder and have, like, a whole bar of shield along with their health. Um, so it's everything takes forever. So fighting Taskmaster, who specifically, you know, is really good at, like, the, um, the, uh, counters and things like that, was pretty brutal. Um, and he also disappeared at one point, and I got a, a pick a screenshot of just a, a floating jetpack in the air <laughs> and we had no idea where he was and he just suddenly popped back up and and like killed both of us at once so i'm pretty sure that was a glitch uh but the floating jetpack never went away and that was pretty amusing did you see um, that video where uh there was a guy playing hulk and he like used the pim particles to make the guy small and then threw him off the building no <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's how you beat the boss. Like the ta like Taskmaster can be on the on the building, right? So you can just yeah. make him small and then pick him up and throw him off, and that's it. That's amazing. <laughs> I'll have to try that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have been playing some 3DS games actually. Whoa! Uh, I know because I'm doing a video on my favorite uh, 3DS games, um, and. I remembered, like I hadn't, I hadn't really done any 3DS com content or anything, because the uh, the emulator didn't run super well on my computer, so there's only like very few games I could actually run smoothly. Hmm. Um, but they've improved the Citra emulator a lot, and I also remembered that my hacked 3DS uh, can wirelessly stream content to the PC, so I can actually like play on my 3DS, and it shows up on the computer screen. And then I can OBS record that window. Yeah. So I'm actually like like natively playing a 3DS game and recording, you know, a feed of it. There you go. Um, the frame rate's not perfect, but it's good enough. <laughs> uh, like it's it's usually between like 35 and 45 frames a second, and most uh, uh, most 3DS games are 60 frames a second. So like it's not you know stuttery by any means. It's just not as steady as the actual game is. But um, if I speed it up in post to like 105% or so, you don't notice it. Because it, you know, it kind of kills any of those uh, stuttering frames. Um, so it actually works really well and allowed me to record a bunch of games that like, you know, I've pretty much beaten. Rather than having to download a ROM of them, start over at the beginning. And so that's been really nice. Um most of the time I spent with uh, Kirby Planet Robot, which is still a very good game, and I'm sad I didn't play it when it came out. Um, I, I need to jump back into that, actually, because like, that's one that I didn't play until I hacked my 3DS and downloaded it, and it instantly became one of my favorite 3DS games. <laughs> um, but it was already so late that like I didn't really care about my 3DS that much. <laughs> so while I love playing it, I hate playing it on the 3DS. Um... And then I also have been playing quite a bit of Nintendo Dogs and Cats hmm. um, because I didn't own that. Like, there's a few games that I, like, used to have and I guess I sold. Uh, like Mario Kart 7, for example. I went to get footage of that and I couldn't find it. <laughs> so I guess I sold it. Um, but, yeah, so I had to download Nintendo Dogs and Cats and start over uh, on my 3DS file. But... Like, you don't have everything you can do at first, so I have to, like... It's kind of the Animal Crossing Syndrome. <coughs> we have to play so many days to unlock everything. Mm -hmm. So, I have the video recorded. I Like, I, you know, I wrote everything up, like, just based on what I would play. Uh, because I, I, I know the game already. 
Um, and then I recorded the video, but I can't put that part in there until I can get the footage. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically waiting until I can get far enough into Nintendogs to actually get the footage I need for it. Which is a little frustrating, but it's still a really fun game. Um, it's just, it's it's slow to start. Um, but I, I picked a Corgi this time because Corgis are adorable. Um, and I'm just waiting to, to save up money to get a cat. Uh, so I can have them like interact and stuff, but oh, that's cool. um, yeah, it's a cool game. Uh, and like, I went to the kennel and picked out a cat, and then I saw how much they are, and I'm like, dang it, <laughs> I don't have enough money. So now I'm grinding out money to afford my cat. How do you get money? Uh, pretty much you do competitions. Um, so like you can put the dog into like a uh, like frisbee throwing competition, or there's like lure training, uh, where they chase like a toy that's you know pulled. Um, on a on a course, and there's like a there's like an AR card thing, um, like the augmented reality cards that come with the 3ds. Mm -hmm. There's something with those, and I don't remember that, and I can't find my AR cards. I know I've got them somewhere, but I can't find them right now, uh, so I can't do that part. Um, but then there's a few other things you can do, but as far as making money, I think those are the only ones. Um, but like you can go visit a cat cafe and like, uh, you know, take your dog in there and like buy a, like a treat for him and a drink for you. And then like someone else will be there with their pet. And so you can like have them play with each other at the cafe, which is pretty cool. Like there's some really fun stuff in that game. Um, it just sucks that I can't put more time into it each day because like you can only compete in two competitions a day. Mm. So if you don't win, you don't get a lot of money. Kind of reminds me of those, like, reminds me of like a precursor to mobile games. Honestly, it feels a lot like a mobile game. Um, Even though it's technically mobile, I mean mobile phone. Let's say right. Phone game. Because like a lot of it does kind of feel like microtransaction-y. Like, it's all in-game currency, but like, you know, you have to feed and, and water your dog, obviously, and you have to buy him toys and all this stuff. Um, and like, they're cheap, but it's the kind of thing where like, if it was a mobile game, like, they would definitely nickel and dime you on that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um... And because, like, you're limited in how much money you can make in a day, it kind of feels like that energy system, you know? But, yeah, so I, I have to keep grinding out in that. Um, and let's see. I didn't put too much time into anything else. A lot of it was, like, games have already beaten, just kind of jumping back in just to kind of get, you know, generic footage of it to play. Um, I... Uh, I did some more with Mario 3D Land, um, which is a good segue into the next one. And man, that's still a really good game. Like, the worst part about that game is that it's on the 3DS. Because I was emulating it. Um, and, like, at 4K resolution, it's beautiful. Like, it looks like a Switch game. Just, you know, obviously, like, less stuff on screen. But it is very high quality. Um... And, like, it's got a really strong art style, and, like, the level designs are great. Like, it's one of my favorite Mario games. And I hadn't really played it much since, like, it came out in probably 2012, 2013, something like that. So, like, I forgot how good it is. I, I'm probably going to, like, just replay that whole game. <laughs> it's a very good collection. No, the Mario 3D Land isn't in that collection. It's a 3D oh, game. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were um, about the collection. They just no, that's know. what I'm talking about next <laughs> uh so yeah also i got the uh mario 3d all-stars collection in today um i didn't get as much time with it as i wanted because i went physical like i never go physical anymore um but i got the physical version and it didn't deliver until like 3 30 or something like that um so like i finished up work and put half an hour into it and then i had to go work on dinner and then you know the electrician and all that um so i was able to get a, a, a bit of a taste for mario galaxy uh just because i wanted to see how the control scheme worked with it and like that game feels really good on the detached joy con um because you know it is a wii game so it's got the motion controls in there but like not having to worry about a sensor bar or anything um you hit the R button on the Joy-Con to uh, to make the, the cursor show up. And then it's just gyro controls, basically. 
So like, you know, you move the remote around and the the mouse moves with you perfectly. Um, if it gets off center, you hit R again. It centers up to what you're pointing at at the time. You're good to go. Like, it's so easy. Uh, <laughs> and it's way smoother than it was on Wii because half the time in that it would desync because you'd lose track of where you were on the sensor bar. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to enjoy playing that again. Uh, I had set it up a little while ago before this collection was announced um, to play on PC with the PS4 controller uh, because you can actually use like the gyroscope inside that controller to map the motion controls to. Mm -hmm. But it didn't feel quite right because you're holding the controller in both hands. So when you're moving it around, like you're, it just, it, it's not, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just not precise. Do you have that same issue if you do the, you know, attach the joy cons as well, you know? I didn't try that. Probably though, because you only like it's only the right joy con that's that's the motion. Hmm. Uh, which is why it I feels good, that, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's why it feels good, because like you can just hold the left, you know, for, for movement and stuff. And then the right, you're you know, you're jumping, aiming, like it's pretty natural. Um with the PS4 controller, it was like you're moving your entire, like, your whole hands. You know, it's I had that issue with the PS3 at times when they mm -hmm. did that. Remember that, the motion? The six axis? Yeah, I was I was almost say sure axis, but I know that wasn't right for nope, a second. Nope, it's a palindrome for some stupid reason. But anyway, reason. yeah, it's like, there was like some games you turn the wheel, you had to do this, and it's just yeah. like... It's just like, you know, it's like, what, you know, like, what is this crap? <laughs> like, you know, just let me do a little... You know, I don't mind doing the roller on the r3 or l3 or something but just like you know it's just like and it's weird because you're, you're holding like this you know is that like this or something you know like a true wheel you're like scrunched up yeah <laughs> so it's not un uncomfortable i'm i'm glad they got away from that gimmick like the ps4 controller still has motion in it but it's not needed for really anything um but it comes in handy for stuff like that um but yeah anyway so mario galaxy is still very good it looks amazing um the only again, the only thing that holds it back is the uh, the cutscenes because they were clearly like full motion video, mm -hmm. and so they're not as upscaled as the rest of the game is. Um, they look not necessarily uh, ripped out of the Wii, but they don't look as good as like the game in motion does. <laughs> it, um, it was probably hard to update that because that's only like four eighty p at right. the time. Yeah, and then I briefly uh, jumped into Mario sixty four, um, just because like. I'm not a huge fan of Sunshine, and I want to, like, give that a proper attention. So to test it out, I wanted to do the two that I like more to compare, you know. Um, and Mario 64 felt faster. Like, specifically, I did the uh, the race against the Koopa Troopa um, <clears throat> in bomb -Bom Battlefield. And, like, I was just zipping. Like, I left him <laughs> in the dust. And, like, I know the game is still running at 30 frames a second. Uh, because it's emulated and they couldn't apparently do anything else with it. Uh, but it just, it feels really smooth. Like, obviously, it, you know, the frame rate is constant. Like, it's it's optimized. But he just felt faster. Like, the game was actually moving faster or something. Hmm. It's been a long time since I've played it. And the last time I did play it was the DS version. Uh, which, you know, the physics and stuff are a little different. But it just, it, it felt better i'll say that mm -hmm. um but it just didn't feel the same i don't know i don't Does know how it... to explain it okay so i've had slowdown with and our uh, mario 64 before does it still have the slowdown in those areas or what areas okay I, I can't remember specifically but i remember sometimes like when there's too much stuff going on in the mario 64 there'll be a little bit of slowdown i mean i didn't notice any okay um, but I also spent, like, maybe ten minutes with it. Yeah, it's probably, like, later levels. Like, I remember specifically, like, maybe the lava levels or the, uh, the mm -hmm. desert levels. There was some slowdown. But it's not, like, you know, a huge thing. Yeah, I mean, that was an N64 launch title. It was not, like, the performance on it wasn't great. <laughs> right. But Back it then. still a really good game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I haven't played through the whole thing since the n64 days um, oh, I got, okay. you know I, I actually i preferred <laughs> mario 64 ds like i think that's a better version yeah um a and so i played through whatever ben um so i played through a lot more of that one 
Um, but I'm excited to jump back into the original and like, you know, see if, see if I remember it, you know, um, same with sunshine to an extent, but I just, like I said, I never, I never really gave that game a fair shake. So I just kind of want to like actually sit down and play through the whole thing. That's why I'm doing the other two first. Cause I can just kind of jump back and forth, but then actually like sit down and play through sunshine. Yeah. Real quick, Justin, I'm kind of wondering, but do you think you may like sunshine more now that you're older? Cause I've kind of had that with some games where didn't like it as much as younger, but like as I gotten older, cause you know, obviously you mature and things <clears> change over time. Yeah. I think it's possible. Um, the only reason I would think maybe I wouldn't is because when I most recently played it was just, you know, emulated GameCube version. Um, and I really didn't even get out of the first level. Whereas like as a kid, <laughs> I actually kind of got, you know, through some of the worlds and, and put some substantial time into it. Um, but also like, there's something about emulating games like that, that I just, I never spend as much time on them. I think it's like playing it in a window on my PC with an unconventional controller versus like, you know, playing it on a system where the button mapping like on screen matches the controller buttons you're pushing. It's just that that native idea just makes it feel better, Um, especially with things like Mario Galaxy, where they actually adapted the controllers to the controller or adapted the controls to the controller. Um, So I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that I like it more. Um, tune I, I appreciate back next like the the to hear differences. His thoughts on tune in next week. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I I probably won't have played it by next week. But. Okay, tune in a month from now. That's more accurate. Okay, I'll definitely play it before the PS5 comes out. <laughs> How about that? Uh. So you done? I think so. All right. So running in with the stud oh, chair. Oh, no, I'm not actually. Ben. Hold on. Sorry. I, I have a show and tell item that I forgot about in relation to this game. So I pre-ordered it at Walmart and it came with this cool uh, sticker set. That's like, this isn't the sticker set, but it's like um, a special uh like pre-order bonus and it's got cool stickers for each game wow so there's like and the the logos also are, <clears throat> are stickers you're gonna put that i don't even know your, if this uh, is clear you're gonna put that on way. your binder i don't know what i'm gonna do with them they're really reflective it's, it's tough they, were, they might look cool in a bag or something yeah so there's the mario sunshine ones <clears throat> and my favorite the mario galaxy ones it just reminds yeah, like, me of stickers that you get to put on your binder at high school or middle school. I could see that. But no, I just thought it was really cool. Like, I mean, you know, the price wasn't any different, but I get these cool stickers with it. Like, they're a nice collectible. <coughs> so yeah, now I'm done. All right, running in with a kendo stick now. We have Ben. Yeah, uh, I'm alive. Uh, so, I'll be quick. Uh, That's what she said. Yeah, um, this is, no, I, I can't really say that because I've had, it's been ten years. Uh, I have dark. Um, out. I've been playing more Outer Worlds, of course, and I'm gonna say it right now. And shout out to the boys at Obsidian and Private Division. Uh, this is my favorite science fiction RPG. Like it hits all my buttons. It gives me the satisfaction of exploration, combat, story. Even though the main narrative isn't the most compelling everything else around it and is enough compelling um especially with the last part remember you get Ni- naoka oh my god she's my favorite so far i love her uh, she has more depth than any of them also felix right. being a being a huge dumbass god felix you're so fucking dumb but i love you um the only one i don't like is max but then like i did his side quest and i'm like he's like minor spoiler for Max, but like he's kind of broken because I didn't have a certain stat up to get him the outcome he would have liked to make him happy. So he's kind of like, like if you know Max, he's like his whole thing is like he believe he they're part of this religion. I say that in used terms where they everybody's part of the plan, and he's been trying to find this thing, and I finally find this thing, and then I don't have my uh, persuade stat to make him. How like translate this book and so he's like oh it's all fucked up it's all for nothing so I'm like damn okay 
I, f I feel bad for you, Max. Uh, but also, before that, we found the dude who stole the book from him. And I was like, we're, no, we're not going to kill him. I did kill him afterwards. <laughs> After we said <laughs> we're not going to kill him. I didn't save scum that one. Um, but, you know, it's it's great. Uh, it's it's such a fantastic uh, game. Um, I, again, I wish the Switch version was a lot better optimized in its resolution. You know, but you can't help for that. It's still playable. The frame rate is mostly consistent. Um I mean, I, mean, I think it's... it's telling that you love it so much, despite it being the Switch right. version. Like, yeah, that's to the quality of the game. Yeah, I can't wait to play it on the Xbox One. I, I will do another playthrough of it, uh, probably more so on the Xbox One, just because I won't be as I don't know. Maybe I will be as addictive. Um, <laughs> but like, I, I love it. It's commitment to everything helps it. Because again, the main story is like Phineas telling you, "Hey, go do this for me. Hey, go do this for me." It's not really that strong, but again, everything else around it is. Um, is fantastic and uh, uh sorry patrick did you ever play that i haven't been it um i still need to okay. beat it i apologize it is a very good anything. game though it is probably it's it's definitely one of the best i should say best that's very subjective it's a really well done um sci-fi rpg which i feel like is very lacking in that genre because <laughs> that's mass effect which is one of my all-time favorite series <laughs> despite, even despite the end of the three which i won't go into it's like I love sci-fi and space, and it's like I get tired how everything's just basically shooter, 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 Star Wars, Star Wars, shooter, shooter, MMO, Star Wars, Star Wars. So it was nice to have something that was different and fresh. Yeah. Okay. I could. I just couldn't remember if you checked that or not. No, I, I chase rabbits of games. You know, I play a game, and another game comes out, and another game comes out, and another game yeah. comes out. That's why I was with it too. I got super into it for like two weeks, and then I haven't gone back to it. But I'm I pretty will far. Too. I'm like good twenty hours in, so I'm pretty far. So. Okay. I I think it helps that I have the Switch version, so I can I take it everywhere. So I can take it right. to work. I do a mission there. I, I travel to this planet here, or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I honestly like. I wish progress transferred between the PC Game Pass version and the Xbox Game Pass version, because like I said, I, I think that's one of those games that I would feel better playing on a console, like on the TV, rather than on my computer screen. Computer screen, but it is what it is. Yeah, um, yeah, and then just you know, Patrick saying about Mass Effect. This is the closest I've said it before, but this is the closest like I've gotten to like Mass Effect, where like I actually feel like I'm a space captain who's trying to do good in the world with occasional assholery. Because hey, this world's cold, and but sometimes you just got to deal with an asshole by shooting well, him in the kneecaps. Also, the dick sometimes being a dick is just funnier. Like yeah, yeah, oh, it's especially great, yeah. in Mass Effect. <laughs> they did it. Oh. Mass Effect Two was the best. Like I oh, love for sure. I love doing, but I was always a good guy, but I couldn't pass up some renegade moments. Sometimes you just gotta shove a guy out of the window, and that's perfectly fine. Or blow um, Krogan up. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna be playing. I think I'm near the end. I'm I'm heading to the gated city, uh, Byzantium, which is sort of like the rich, the the rich, the rich people live, the entitled people. So part of oh, me cool. wants to just go in there, guns blazing, and just burn down capitalism. But I want to see where it goes and see how it tries to corrupt me because something tells me it will. But we'll see how that goes. Um, just save before you go in and then try all the options true oh, no. real quick which which planet's kind of like not the gated city but there's like another city where um it's really rich and you're like renegade like medical pirate doctors families there i'm trying to remember what city that is or planet um is. the medic i mean that's remember the pirate you know lady that's in your team i'm terrible with names so i don't want to like ellie yeah yeah she's yeah, on yeah. she was on groundbreaker i haven't gone to her home planet because She's the only one of my crewmates who has yet... I've done every other crewmate except for Sam, the robot who I love, and <laughs> Ellie, they have yet to come up to me like, hey, I got a problem. Felix has come up to me with a problem. Max, Parvati, um, and then Naoka, I completed her storyline. Um, but n not Ellie yet. I keep waiting. Uh, but I like having her, her and Felix together because I feel like they play off each other pretty well. Um, that's another thing that keeps me playing is the is the dialogue between the characters and just how like that characterization. It's so it's it's so, it's so good. I'll I'll find myself listening to them. Um, oh, yeah. no. spoiler then. <laughs> so yeah, I've done her side story. So okay, I, I'm sure it'll, it'll pop up at some point. Um, but besides that, uh, I did stream again. I'm I'm actually I'm, I'm consistent. What a surprise! Uh, for two weeks at least. Uh, I was going to stream Panzer Dragoon Remake and just scream Panzer Dragoon for like two hours, but... Pants Dragon! Yeah, but at the last moment, I was like, I kind of want to do Mega Man X4 again, but with Zero. And I thought about it, I'm like, man, is this going to be bad? Because 
I usually struggle with zero because especially with certain bosses and it actually requires skill, which I have none. So <laughs> I was like, well, let's just do it. And surprisingly, I, I, I it was a fun game to play through. Um, you crushed that run. Uh, no, I didn't. It was okay. Um, but, uh, like, m- like for the, like, Mad Dragoon, I think I only died, like, twice with him, and then, like, I figured, like, it, I just keep getting off, it was like, it, what you saw, if you saw me stream it, and you saw me dealing with Mad Dragoon throwing Hadoukens and Shurikens, that's how I deal with them in a fighting game, I'm, that's why I don't call myself good, I'm tra- I consider myself trash, because I just, like, I jump into shit, why are you jumping, stop jumping, you idiot, uh, but uh, otherwise, it's still, a, still a such a fine game, that game is, well, that ace. boss rush is bogus, though. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, X is so much easier just because you can just stun lock everybody. But oh yeah, and I streamed X four. Uh, tattoo. I did. I, I completed Mega Man X four for like the hundredth time. I think I don't know. Uh, because that game is super fun to play. Mm-hmm. X is always basic bitch mode, but it's fun basic bitch mode. <laughs> but it's so. It's and I, I think I remember freaking out when I got the jump slash with uh with zero since I pretty much just call it jump slash the game where he does like a twirl. Uh, such a fun game. No, I don't mm. need to go into more to it, but it's 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 been a, it was a good time uh, streaming those. I probably won't be streaming any other X games going forward unless it's because I don't want to do X five on stream because I don't want to get mad on stream. Um, this is not and I, I maybe if I like start taking like donations or something, I, that's not even a consideration right now. But if I do, maybe like hey, if you hit a certain goal, I'll do X six. But we'll see. Uh, fuel my uh, fuel it by with greed. Um, X six is better than X five. No, it's not. That's good. That's a garbage hot take. Um, but uh, X six is harmlessly bad. It's hot. I broke a P- broke a PS one controller because of the bullshit that game throws at you. At least X five has some kind of redeeming <sighs> qualities. X six X six is a nothing game. X six is randomizer of the game. It's literally a legalized a, a published randomizer. That's what that shit is. Uh, but enough of X six. Um. And then just to just to run off for me, because uh, I don't really want to talk about anything else, uh, I played uh, the Mario All Stars, the 3D collection, because I was gonna get it physically, but I was like, I kept seeing people getting their pre-orders canceled, and I'm like, do I really want to fucking wait? And do I really want to take Outer Worlds out of the cartridge slot? I really don't. <laughs> so I just bought it digitally, played it this morning, and God, I, I, I went straight to Galaxy. Fuck Sunshine. Fuck 64. <laughs> they don't matter. Yeah. Don't care about them. I did end up booting them up, and I immediately backed out. Uh, Sunshine, I'm the most curious about, just because I never played it. I skipped mm-hmm. over it. Even my dad, I remember my dad telling me back in like 2002 that like it's not a good game, son. You don't want to play it, even though we <laughs> had a GameCube, um, which was odd. I gotta say though, like as a GameCube game, it still looks amazing. That's all right. Like all they had to do was put it <laughs> widescreen and up the resolution, and it like it looks like a modern game. Uh, okay, um, but uh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I would agree if you were talking about Resident Evil 4, but, like, you know, okay, I'll leave you to that, Justin. But Mario Galaxy, I'm not going to make any kind of caveats. It still feels amazing. Uh, I played it exclusively in handheld mode, and um, and my fears were confirmed. Uh, everything is touchscreen, which isn't too bad. Uh, it just takes a little used to, mm-hmm. uh, basically swiping the screen to get star bits, and that's just more at my ADD than anything else. But it was fun. God... That sound effect when you collect star bits is so <laughs> fucking good, and I just want to keep collecting them. Um, so, but so far, if and, and it felt good to just press Y to uh, to spin. So luckily, yeah. that's not tied to emotion anymore. Um, I unlocked the um, the the dolphin ride, uh, and I don't know how that plays in motion in. Uh, oh in dang, you got pretty far yeah i i got all three stars on the first world uh and, god that that music is so fucking good and i was all i i almost got all the stars in the b galaxy so i i'm saying this right now i'm gonna try to get all 240 power stars to get luigi because i've never done it before uh and i can do it now i feel like i can do it now just because i can take it on the go and it's 120 power stars that unlocks luigi and then you replay the game as luigi okay so i'm gonna try to get all 120 power stars to get luigi and play as luigi and then casually play it again and you know because i want to unlock luigi yeah um so uh we'll see how that goes uh, I'm not going to stream it or anything, but, like, God, it's so... It's, like, I love Odyssey, right? Odyssey is, like, a different beast, 
But Galaxy, uh, and I wrote this in our, 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 our private Discord, but like, it's just fucking comfort food at this point. <laughs> it's And funny enough, with the original Galaxy, uh, I um, the game, the, the version I bought, the disc was kind of scratched or kind of messed up, but not too bad. And I played through 99% of the game. Bowser fight? Eh. I, I, it, it stops at the Bowser fight. So I've never technically beaten Mario Galaxy. Uh, I've beaten Galaxy 2. God, that game is also good. Yeah. But... Did you 100% well? No, did no, no, you get no. everything? I don't remember. It's been a while. Okay, you would um, remember because the Grandmaster Galaxy is fantastic. No, I don't. Then I didn't. Um, okay. It's been a while. I, I think I just beat the game. But yeah, no, it, it feels great just playing it. It feels again. It feels a little weird um, when uh, the weird. The one thing I'm gonna be annoyed with is when you have to do those blue things where like Mario has like you have to touch them for Mario to come along. That's when I feel like that's gonna be the most intrusive. And I wish there was a way that could have done something else with it, but I think I can live, or maybe I'll just save those levels to play on the TV, which yeah. is not the biggest sacrifice. I was gonna uh, say I don't know if you were here yet, but like the Joy-Con controls feel really good. I I'm sure, but I wanna I wanna see how it feels with the Pro Controller um, first, uh, because I like using my Pro Controller, and I yeah. don't really like using the Joy Cons unless I absolutely have to when I'm on the go, because <clears throat> uh, my Pro Controller does not leave my house. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's great. Um, I, 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 that's all I really have to say about it. Uh, I'll be definitely pl- pl- pretty pretty much my time will be this week is between more Outer Worlds and more Super Mario Galaxy, aka the best Mario game there is. And that's sure. enough for me. I'll yeah. shut up. Back in my closet. Bye bye. I like Galaxy Two more than Galaxy One. They're you both just, great games. They are. I mean, you are yeah. just full of like weird hot takes tonight. Well, I have that's, a specific that's reason just for that. Per- persona it's true it's it's me as a person um patrick's dealt with it for like 20 years unfortunately, um, unfortunately. but um the reason i say that not to derail things too far but mm-hmm. galaxy 2 is definitely a more like kind of you know structured level based game but i think it is it gives you more for your completion um like, the levels in general are more uh, diverse, for one, because it's, like, smaller, bite-sized galaxies rather than these big worlds that you have to get, like, you know, seven or eight stars in or whatever. Um, I don't think there's a single galaxy that has more than, like, four. So And they're not... He's, like, leaning in. Like, he's really excited to, to backtalk me. <laughs> anyway, um, and... Galaxy 2, like, because they're more bite-sized and, like, you know, don't have as many stars in them, they have a lot more variety of worlds. So there's, like, all these different things you do in that game. Um, it just feels... It's 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 good for ADD, I think. But also, like, the end of Galaxy 1, you get all of the stars as Mario, you unlock Luigi. You play through the whole game again as Luigi, you get, like, a, a final galaxy that's basically just... Um, going through the uh like the star festival or whatever with a star at the end like it's not that interesting galaxy 2 same way you get all of the stars <clears throat> you unlock luigi uh you finish the whole game as luigi there's also like new stars as luigi um like these these like hidden green stars that you have to get um and then you do the whole thing and you unlock like a uh, like a star road type thing uh, that takes you to the Grandmaster Galaxy. That's like a super hard, like, uh, like challenge gauntlet, kind of like the end of Odyssey. Um, and then once you beat that, you get another version of it where you can't die. You have to get through the whole thing without dying. So again, like Odyssey. Um, so I just think like they put a lot more time into like the diverse levels of content in Galaxy Two. Um, even though it is just basically building off of what made Galaxy One great, but that's that's my soapbox there. <laughs> I mean, it's not too uncommon the sequel to be better, right? Because they I already just, had everything built, so they could focus yeah. more on the level design and stuff like that. Yeah, and build on top of that. I mean, it's like yeah, Mass Effect Two's. Well, sometimes you go backwards, like Mass Effect Three, in terms of story, but that's why yeah. gameplay is better in Two and Three. You just build right, on wow, top. just like Majora's Mask out. is better than Ocarina of Time. We are just throwing out hot takes today, aren't we? Okay. Excuse me, uh, while I eat were chicken. Were you here when I t- talked about Mass Effect? Ben? I don't think so. 
Uh, saying I love the series is one of my all-time favorites. It's just kind of... I even, like, forgive the end in a third just because I love the series so much. But it's, like, one of those, like... It's like Shane because it's, like, it's such a great game in terms of gameplay and some other elements, but it's just kind of ruin it with a rush story. <laughs> so, anyway, let's just stop there before we go on, like, an hour discussion <laughs> of Mass Effect War and theories. Cause it's Turn into an Ace Attorney skit. Oh, God. Uh, can I go get another beer real quick? No. <laughs> go ahead. You're not the host, Justin. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, so what have I been up to? I've been uh, mostly playing Avengers, uh, mostly like the online stuff and the end game grind. And mm -hmm. I am very much disliking the end game grind. It feels like it's a, uh, it's just way too repetitive for what yeah. it is. Um, all the levels look the same now. All the like you can tell which building you're going into. It's like oh, it's going to be like this. Like yeah, uh, dude, I had that. When I was doing Thor's Iconic like, Mission, I could not keep focused for more than five minutes before, like, okay, stop. <laughs> Look at Twitter. Yeah. Okay, but to fall this. asleep. Like, I'm... Yeah. I, yeah. I kind of lost focus a little bit after beating the story. Can, can I just can I just have them talk, please? Can I just have more of those? Can I more of scenes with Steve and Tony talking about how, like, yo, I'd suck your dick if we're about to die in space. It's okay, bro. That's totally seen it happen. You gotta That's press totally what X, y, <laughs> X, Y, and B. And start before it happens, and uh, Nolan North will say that to you, Steve Rogers. Yeah, and but then, like apparently after you beat all of like the the post game campaign missions, you get another cutscene, like another story cutscene. So like I feel like I have to keep going to get that. Well, I'm nearly there. I'm probably like five sevenths out of getting yeah. there. Like I'm nearly there. Uh, I'm just leveling up on some of my alt characters now, just like the other ones. Like I started working on uh, uh, Captain America. And uh, Hulk, Hulk was pretty fun getting back into using him, uh, yeah. learning how to use him properly, like grabbing dudes, just and just hulking out, basically, <laughs> uh, getting your health back for every hit. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I'm also really sick and tired of uh, the challenge bugs that they have with their weekly challenges mm. and daily challenges, where you do something and that doesn't count. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that. Ah, oh. So, like, I ran like a vil uh, villain sector, mm -hmm. and uh, it didn't count. And you need to do five of those. I was just like, all right, I'm just gonna refresh this every time I see it because it doesn't count anymore. Oh, yeah, so especially when like it's sometimes it's really long stuff that doesn't count. Yeah, that's, that would kill. There's my like one for game. doing all like like five hive missions, and I haven't finished it, my hive mission yet. But if I finish it and it doesn't count, I'm just refreshing that. Um. Wow. Yeah, and I've kind of put it on hold until they put out some bigger patches, which I'm hoping is, this patch that just dropped yeah, will help. But. They just dropped out a gigantic patch, and apparently it's like 10 gigs or something. I'm not uh, playing Avengers tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm also waiting for the raid. Like, they have no information on the raid yet. Oh, which sucks. Well, I mean, I think my problem is, is the fact I think the grind, at least personally for me, it would be better if they didn't tie cosmetics to money and you actually earned like cool costumes by completing hard missions yeah like yeah. i get i get that you have to monetize this thing right but i'll i'll point you to mortal Kombat where you playing the game got you cool costumes and it's technically a games of service game so i don't understand versus like i just mean getting... destiny did that too for a while mm -hmm. um, yeah and there is that to an extent like you know there's ones you get through the story and stuff but definitely most of them are locked behind vendors and money. Or yes. the challenge card, which is money. Yeah. Um, I think they could have, like, game. trickled it out more where, like, the exotic costumes, like, the really cool ones, are locked. But right. you can get, like, some common ones through stores. Right. Which and you can, technically, to an extent, you can get, like, the blueprints or whatever. Right. But those are random. I don't think they have exotic costumes yet, though. Right? Oh. They only have up to legendary, I think. It's like oh well whatever the, the, that's the point. No, but I'm saying like there's cool, room cool there. Costumes. No, cool costumes. No, I'm just saying that there's room there to bring in uh, exotic costumes and have them be yeah. like in the raid and stuff like that. They yeah. have over seventy years of fucking source material to look for costumes. I looked at Thor's except costumes, Kamala. and they're all bad except for the cape. Like the one with the cape is like the best. Uh, oh my god, Thor has the worst costume in the fucking game. It's really yeah. bad. 
the one where it's basically his his uh, his um, original like comics costume with the helmet. <laughs> the helmet he yeah. looks so oh. bad on the board. Not even the helmet <laughs> and the, the hair. The, the helmet's stupid. The hair's stupid. He looks like he's wearing jeans. Mm-hmm. Why does it look like the God of Thunder's wearing jeans? It looks like a Halloween costume. Yeah, it looks so bad. Mm-hmm. Jack, Cur- like, I was like, "What did you do to Kirby's design? <laughs> what did you do?" <laughs> just, I never want to see that again. So I just, yeah, I love other. finding a store, but I hate his costumes. Yeah, yeah. His the really main good. one is fine. the The one you get from movies like Iconic Vision, I want that one because that one looked neat, and I don't know how to get that one. Why can't I get that one? You do the you get it from the Iconic Mission. mission. Do you get it from the Iconic Mission? I beat it. You get I mean, costumes. I know I didn't beat it because I quit out because I got so fucking bored. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> See, you didn't beat it. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have you fight MODOK, but you need to go find these specific ingredients. Go grind, fucker. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, the Avengers, like, getting to 150 is pretty rough. I got to... Uh, uh, so essentially, to get to 150, you need to have all your gear to be 130, and then you upgrade it to... Um, like ten plus for your for your armor and then your artifact as well. Uh, so now it's just if I wanted to get Iron Man to one hundred and fifty, I just have to grind out materials, which I did not want to do. So I switched characters. Mm. Um, hopefully the raid stuff is good, and they, it's weird that they haven't said anything about the raid. Like they haven't said what power level you need to be yet. Uh, hopefully it's not one hundred and fifty. Hopefully, hopefully it is one hundred and thirty, and then they just make it easier when you get higher. Um. It seems like they're averaging everything for 130, but maybe the rate will be higher. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, yeah, that's 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 the last thing I'm waiting on. I guess is like I the only thing I have left to do is the last um, end game mission quests and uh, yeah. a vault here and there. I think and that's it. Oh, the hard missions mm-hmm. actually. I haven't really done a lot of those. Uh. Yeah, I haven't played anything other than that. I did, though. I was able to pre-order a PlayStation 5, though. Same. Lucky. I chose not to do anything. <laughs> you already bought a console. Is, is this our segue into the news segment now? Uh, Yeah, we can. I'm going to go ahead and throw up uh, an ad real quick, though. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, he does, like, ad breaks between the things. I, I was kind of wondering about that, but it was like an hour, and I was like, I am thirsty, and my beer has been empty for like 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, no, you're fine. Um, okay. It's a pretty new thing. Oh, um, I, I tapped into that Thundertaker I told you about, that right? Oh, now. yeah? Mm-hmm. It is awesome. Thundertaker. Nice. Is it Hoppy? No, no, no. It, it's hmm. weird, because I know it says rye, but it's a yeah. stout beer still, so it's not Hoppy. Um, it is bitter, because it's a barrel age, so it's it's barreled aged in two kinds of bourbon barrels, so, but very Dang. good ones. It did Blantons and. It's probably pretty strong then. Oh, it's about fourteen and a half percent. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So. Nice. It's it, you had the the parent they call it the parent beer where it's like the original and then they obviously do variants when mm-hmm. it comes to like how it's stored or what they do. You had the Rye Way to Heaven, which you like, so it's... Yeah. And that was a rice test. So that's almost like the base spear. And then, you know, the, this is a variation they're trying out. Okay. So, yeah, if you come down the hol- for the holidays, you'll have to stock our basement bar. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I bought two packs of these. I mean, it doesn't sound a lot, but the good news is beers are barrel aged. So they don't go bad anytime soon. Like, I did okay. a beer, a barrel aged from two years ago, a couple of days ago. It's still just as good. Nice. And, and you can store them for a long time. And that is beer time with Patrick. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, I it's a specialty. Came, it came back up during the ad, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. It's fine. <laughs> I was so, planning this on it. It's not going to be a beer podcast. <laughs> I was I was planning on it. Don't worry. Uh, so yeah, let's. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess I guess we'll talk into the uh, the PlayStation stuff first, but I want to talk about the experience of pre-ordering it because it, it's been a while since we've yeah. like had new hardware to like get excited about and. Mm-hmm. After that, like Sony conference, like PlayStation stream we watched, uh, I immediately hopped into uh, a video game deals Canada Discord, and everyone there was just like sharing information. It's like, is the pre-orders coming out today? Are they coming out tonight? And it was like really fun just hopping in there and like talking with other people and just getting hyped about. 
it's nice when the community well, actually comes together. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, and, and this is actually going to be somewhere related. So I, I saw the same thing with like Twitter and like the PlayStation 4, Reddit, and all that here in the U.S. But also, ironically, in the same week and almost like a day apart, that new NVIDIA card dropped. Yeah, and yeah. Like, it was just like mm-hmm. completely crashed all these sites <laughs> as well. <laughs> just like the GameStop got crashed during the be- you know PS4 and stuff, and then it's like vice versa. Then all of a sudden, New Egg and Best Buy crash, or Best Buy probably crashed twice, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was I don't think I don't think Nvidia knew when the PS5 was coming when they decided yeah. that. No. Yeah, that no, was. I think, just... I think they experienced. I think they were they announced like two three months ago, and the experience announced like a month ago with that or a few yeah. Months ago. Yeah. Uh. Very ironic though. Back to back days. Yeah. But so I was all I was all over on Twitter and all the different retailers' websites. Uh. As as soon as uh Walmart came up for US, I was like Justin, here go, and he's like, mm-hmm. thank you. <laughs> And I guess, like all these people were having so many problems, and like, I guess we just got it early enough because yeah, we did. I, just I honestly went right think through. Walmart is kind of like the back burner. Like you don't, you don't go to Walmart, and like, and I should say not everyone goes to Walmart, but you just don't really think of it. You always think of GameStop, Amazon. Yeah. Um, but like, they were the first ones but, to drop. It was about an hour after the conference, and there was no problems. Yeah. Like, but I also like I got my Mario 3D All Stars there. I got the uh, the Mario Kart Home Circuit there. Like, they've been crushing it with pre-orders because, again, I don't think anyone thinks to go there. Well, then it varies because, like, the Walmart next to me is just the grocery store version. There's no game in at my Walmart. Oh, I, have to go to an- I have to go to another one. But remember, I live in a city, so there's, like, another Walmart, like, five miles away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the one that's only- next to me is... But, like, I just I ordered online, so it doesn't matter where the Walmart is. It's just going right. to get shipped to me. Do you have to pay all of it up front? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with Best Buy, you don't have to do that, so I haven't been charged yet. Yeah, uh, which is really See, cool. I, I like the Best Buy model. Um, I'm not sure if GameStop does it because I never pre-order online at GameStop. See, I, I like... actually don't like that because, like, when I order something, I know I have the money for it. Like, re- if I order it months in advance, I'm gonna forget, <clears throat> and then by the time it comes out, I'm like, oh crap, I didn't transfer any money over. <laughs> the reason I don't, so I don't pre-order too often, but there's been a few times I end up canceling because like more came out or something came out that turned me off over time, mm-hmm. and. I, I, I'm eventually going to get a PlayStation. I just didn't pre-order. I didn't rush into it. It's just kind of like, all right, I know one Spider-Man for sure, and then probably maybe Call of Duty, but I'm like, okay, do I just, you know, is that enough to justify it, or is it just more like impulse, buy it now, and then, like, when I should probably normally like to wait, a, you know, in the past, a few more games come out. Then they and the, also, like, Jeff Keighley was tweeting that night saying, uh, some people are going to be early, some select retailers are going to be early, and then he tweeted out after that, uh, no, that's false, it's going to be coming out tomorrow. And then all of a sudden, Walmart is like, hey, come over here. You got the pre-orders. And then everyone else had to panic and put them out, I think. Yep. It was it was a lot In of response. fun. It, yeah. I like this, like, madness. I don't know why. It's just, like, part of the hype, part of the adrenaline rush. I, I kind of miss the old days. Well, and pre-pandemic as well. But, like, <laughs> I remember, like, videos of the PS2 when it came out. I didn't get it when it came right out, but, like, within a few months. But that night it came out, there was, like, news stories I remember seeing, mm-hmm. like, it was like it was like Black Friday, but in the middle of like you know just like October, just for the PS2 or whatever. <laughs> like well, I remember. I mean, like, it's not crap. quite the same because it was still online pre-ordered. But like, I remember me and my brother going at midnight to get our switches a few years ago. Like we were standing outside Best Buy with a bunch of other people, and they were all just chatting about like, oh yeah, you you probably get Zelda with it, right? Like, you know, <laughs> there's a bunch of Zelda fans hanging outside Best Buy waiting for them to open so we can get our switches. Yeah, that's like cool. I love those events. See, that's what um, I loved about pre-ordering and picking up games. Like, you know, I did that with Grand Theft Auto and Kingdom Hearts and then just talking about the whole series of fans for like, yeah. you know, 45. Now, granted, those, you already pre-ordered you just went to pick it up. Right. Unlike the PS2 era, we actually had to like get in line like Black Friday and just hope you liked that. But it's it's a little tenser then because it's like, who's going to get one? It's like, yeah. you don't really want to be friends with anyone. It's like the Hunger Games. He's going to mug you when you leave the store. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Beat the... Actually, there's a funny meme I saw in a second, but yeah, it's, I just love you meme of fans. And the meme I saw, it's from um, the Avengers movie, which shows like Thor being the crap out of Iron Man goes when the last guy has the PS5 target on Black Friday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the big punch and knock him over. So. Yeah, it does suck that a lot of people have had trouble getting them, but yeah. like, I, I think this is a fun time. When the scalpers don't grab them and it gets annoying. And they're constantly putting them like back in stock. Like, they're constantly refreshing stocks on the yeah. hour, which is good. Yeah. Um, apparently, they've had a lot more physical versions than digital versions, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, considering retailers, 
don't want yeah. you to sell a sell a discless console to you. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. I'm on the opposite yeah. of Justin when it comes. I like discs as well, which I know Justin's more digital. I got the physical version though because I still like to have the option. Yeah, that actually shocked me. I actually assumed you were going to go for digital when they've announced it. Well, for one, it's got backwards compatibility with PS4, and I have some disc games PS4, so I like, you know, if it's backwards compatible, I'm not going to keep my PS4 plugged in. Like it's a it's a basically a launch system, and it sounds like a jet engine. How I'm much gonna, for it? <laughs> I mean, I'm probably just gonna like keep it like I do my other consoles. Oh, I see. I have to break in your house. Okay. Got it. <laughs> um, but like you know, I wouldn't need it to play games. So, like, I want to still be able to play the discs because it'd be yeah. a, a shame to not be able to play my discs. Right. Right. Um, yeah. But like, I did. I did read that. Um, their strategy for having both of these is they have a digital model, but they have barely any stock of them. So people will go to get the digital model. It won't be available and they'll buy the physical instead. Mm, great, like so people end up day, spending yeah. more money because there's way more physicals available and they just want to get the system. Yeah. So it's kind of sleazy. Um, yeah, I didn't even try, uh, I didn't either. Just just because I feel like I used my <clears throat> pre-order luck when I got my Switch in 2017, <laughs> um, where like they were having that presentation, and I felt I was sick that day, and I fell asleep during it, and I woke up like around like two in the morning, and I was like, oh, and then I it was at the end, I was like, and that's and you can pre-order switches now, so I was like, well, let's go to Amazon slowly, super slowly, and I was like, pre-order, and then I got my Switch in March. So I, I didn't I was like, nah. I, I just caught my Xbox One X. I am I, I have twenty thirteen to two thousand twenty worth of games to go through. <laughs> I'm fine being a gen behind. You're saving up your I, uh your luck for the Switch Pro, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, there you go. I will slit a fucker's throat to uh, <laughs> to get a Switch Pro. What makes me mad is I waited months to to find a Switch for my wife because I was like, maybe they'll announce the Switch Pro, you know, whatever. And then they didn't, so I just bought one of the normal ones and then now they're probably going to announce that like early next year yeah eh, i mean would she appreciate a pro <laughs> no, no the pro is but i him. would yeah <laughs> oh i see the hand me down yes thing, yeah she got my old one anyway yeah. <laughs> oh but to um ben's point is that right ben since since he came yes out? yeah okay yes. i i was kind of the same way it's like let me complete a few more games because i know i know i would love spider-man out of the gate um i yeah, but it's on ps4 I, with a free I, upgrade i, I I, I also oh well, I'll just wait till get it. I'm gonna get eventually get a PS5 probably within like three to six months because I know yeah. like in February you get the new Far Cry game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cyberpunk no when, fighting games. That's why I'm not buying one. <laughs> I I want to get back into this series because I just like the actors, but we'll see. It's just kind of it's just it might be one of those I buy it just to fill out the system early on, which isn't the first I've done with a, a new mm-hmm. generation. But anyway, um, and then call. I like Call of Duty. I'm curious to try out the Alpha this weekend just to see how it is. Um, I love the Cold War era, too, and I love Black Ops, the the first one. So it's just like, that's yes. a nostalgia play for me there. Let's and... destabilize a third world country of brown people. Yes. But but then, like, I want to play Shut Demon up, brown Souls, person. but uh, Justin and I have a good friend that loves the Soul series, but I know he's probably not going to get a PlayStation anytime soon, so I kind of just want to wait yeah. to play with him. Because and it's going to be on PC. Yeah, so he probably just going to PC. Well, They've been kind of hiding that fact, but... Wait, what? Yeah. yeah, Demon Souls will be on PC. No, it's not. It's not. That just 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 All right, let's get like into the, the conference. Oh, yeah. Okay. Catch okay. it on PC, by the way. So I'm using this Verge article. I posted it in our Discord. So if you want to give it over to um, uh, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to go in order of this. So they basically say the, fir- the first thing here is they announced the uh, the console. The disc version was $499.99. And PS5 it, uh, digital is going to be three ninety nine ninety nine, so hundred dollar difference. Uh, it's going to be launching November twelfth, which is that two days after the Series X. Yeah. Okay. Xbox uh, is November tenth. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and then they put up pre-orders for that day basically, and uh, which is weird. It comes out on Thursday. I've seen that more games though. Like games are coming out Thursday, Friday now. Like it used to be always Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nintendo games, and now they've broken that chain finally. Mm. Uh, which I think it was really smart for them to put up pre-orders like right away, basically, because uh, 
you get it in before uh, Xbox, and then also you build up all this hype and like rushed for people to go and get get it right away. Well, well that's the other thing why I kind of want to wait a little bit. Just like I, I know I'm eventually going to get it, so I try to be a low fair. But it's like okay, I'm super hype right now. You know, you know, like calm down. You know, don't go get excited and just spend. You know, even though I could probably afford it, but still, it's 500 bucks. So you know, if you you commit to it, you commit to it. So. Uh, and then then next up in their article, they have God of War's back. So they showed off that little brief teaser of God of War 2, which is just a symbol. Ragnarok. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's going to be a way out, but at least it's showing the future. 2021. Know. And then no, we'll see. Uh, I, I, and then next I would I would guess winter thing. 2021. I'm gonna say most games get delayed nowadays because it's so complicated. Just yeah, <laughs> background with some computer science, it's just amazing how complicated that. But I could see them pushing the winter release because it's very. It seems like it's very like winter themed. Yeah, that's why you do it in July because you're like ready for winter again. Oh yeah, <laughs> when it comes, you're ready for summer again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sorry, continue. <laughs> next up, we have the PlayStation Plus is getting an extra bonus. Uh, they announced the PlayStation Plus Collection. Uh, it's a new feature for a subscription Sometimes. service that lets subscribers play a huge range of classic PS4 games on their PS5, uh, and it's coming with the console. Uh, the following games are in that collection, so we have God of War, Bloodborne, Hunter, Monster Hunter World, uh. Final Fantasy XV, Fallout 4, Mortal Kombat X, Uncharted 4, Thief's End, Ratchet and Clank, Days Gone, Until Dawn, Detroit Become Human, Battlefield 1, Infamous Second Son. Batman Arkham Knight, Last Guardian, Last of Us, uh, Persona 5, and Resident Evil 7. Real, real quick, I thought that was a really good idea, especially for people that didn't have a PlayStation 4, and that's like a good <laughs> way to introduce them a lot of the best of, of yeah. both first and third party games from last gen. Minus a couple multiplots in there. Yep. Yeah, like, I think they had kind of made the, the value proposition of PlayStation Plus pretty poor for a while there. So it's nice to see that they're actually like bringing some of that value back, even yes. if these are all games that people probably owned because they were the best selling ones on the yeah, console. Yeah, I think I've played most of them, if not yeah, all. Yeah, same here. It's just I just think of like their goal is to get new players. So I'm thinking, right. Well, it's also like a, like as a lazy person, it's a convenience as well. It's just like yeah. I don't I have mean, to I'd go and honest, dig out my I would, discs. I would, I would like just re-download a couple. Re-download of those download them. <laughs> yeah. So like I would probably check out. Uh, I mean. I I, can't, I don't know if I if I'd play the Last of Us remastered. I did play the Last of Us. Um, I didn't beat it, and then my stuff was stolen, so I I never bought it again because I was like, this game's scary. I'm not gonna beat it. Maybe I'd try it again. You should um, try Persona. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. Okay, and then I, I would Royal, probably though, but that's yeah. Bias. I would I would check out Infamous Second Son because that's another one that I had started. Very um, good game. Yeah, and then Persona Five. Maybe I'll actually oh. finally play it. It's a turn-based and, JRPG. <clears throat> invite me for Persona 5, because I love Persona It's so it. dense, though. <laughs> it, it's it's the greatest hundred hours of your life. The, you each misspelled, game. You misspelled Xenoblade Chronicles, buddy. <laughs> I actually need to play that, because I have a... I, I, that is on my list, along with like a lot of other shit Oops. right now. I closed the Kotaku article. Uh, the next up, we have Final Fantasy Perfect. 16 was announced for PlayStation and PC. Game Surprise of Thrones meets Final Fantasy. Yeah. No, I had to say, I agree with Ben. It's like, oh, medieval. I'm actually surprised how long that trailer was. I thought right? it'd be like, oh, it'd be like a 30 second teaser, like Kingdom Hearts 3 or something. And it's like, okay, or, it must be like five years from now. So we alternate see title time. Devil May Cry across Final Fantasy. Yeah, that, that's one thing I wanted to say is the battle director for this game uh, harkens from Capcom. And yep. worked on things really? like Devil May Cry. So, yep. I, didn't know, I didn't know you went to Square Enix. That's pretty wild. Yeah, so <laughs> like this cake. could have a pretty legit combat system. Uh, real, I was going to joke, like, watch it be renamed Final Fantasy 15 versus 12. Like, it just becomes uh, a complete disaster. This is, uh, I never noticed this before, but did it always have the subtitle Awakening? Or is that just the name of the trailer? That's the name of the trailer. The trailer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Guess, that's just a trailer. I don't yeah, think they, but, I don't think they the, ever use subtitles in the main line. Well, I mean, the thumbnail no, no, also no, no, no. said Awakening on it, so I was just curious about that. No, it's the Awakening trailer. Okay. Awakening. Yeah. But, like, By the, the way, game itself looks great. It, I love the, the big summons, and, like, it seems like... I, I kind of I dove into some lore stuff. Uh, like, I rewatched the trailer and tried to kind of, you know, deep dive it. And it looks like the summon monsters that they're going after, like, you know, the, the war, like the armies of people are going after mm-hmm. are tied to people. Like either the people summon them or they become them. So what you're saying um, is that people are strands. People have strands in this game. 
Um, uh, is that a JoJo thing? Yes. Stands. Oh, you love I JoJo? I, was, I love those stands. I think it this is guy's stands. Awesome. Yeah, stands. That's <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, okay. So watch JoJo, Justin, um, please. Maybe I will. Uh, Justin doesn't like anime. I like some anime. He has an anime I've heard club, good things about he? JoJo. Um, oh, anyway, but ahead. like at the end, it's got the the little kid, and they're like freaking out because it seems like he's summoning Phoenix or something. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. But then there's also the guy that like becomes fire, and it seems like he turns into Ifrit. So I'm not really sure how it works exactly, but it definitely seems like there's a tie between the people and the summons. Right. And I'm wondering if it's going to be like a Final Fantasy 13 situation mm. where they're like chosen, and like your party members each have one of the summons tied to them. And so those people you were seeing, like the you know the Shiva, the the uh, Phoenix, the <laughs> Ifrit, like if they are your party members, like when you meet them. Right. And so, like, you're, like, a group of rebels fighting back against the armies of people that are trying to kill the summons. And you're just, like, the person that's, like, hey, like, don't, like, if you kill this, you kill me. Like, you know, I, I gotta, don't step I gotta on defend me. myself. <laughs> and I think that uh, could be really one, cool. One note about this, uh, the, the people behind it, it's the Final Fantasy XIV crew that's behind yeah. this huh. game. You know, I was I. That's a good point, real quick. Because when I was watching, I actually thought it was. Like, it's reminded me of fourteen with the yeah. character designs and the. Mm-hmm. I, I, I this sounds horrible at first. I thought the graphics looked off until like the monsters or creatures looked a lot good. It doesn't like, the quite look next gen. Remind me of Final Fantasy fourteen. Like, yeah, it was like, like just the models. Yeah. yeah, it's the style for sure, but it doesn't quite look next gen. I think it's. I think it's probably alpha footage. It's like probably, it's not quite yes. polished. Yeah. And, that's one thing I was going to also mention. I'm really curious how far development, and the reason I say that, because Square Enix, in my view, has become very notorious, where they drop a game, and it's, like, still, like, four <laughs> years out. <laughs> like, it's one that's, like, a year and a half, two years out, but it's, like, I mean, Kingdom Hearts 2 is, like, announced, like, 12 or 13, it took, like, six years. I mean, 14 was, like, a decade, ten, or 15 was, like, yeah. a decade. Now, granted, seven, that was a real different. Seven yeah. was six years, roughly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, I'm really curious. Like, I mean, if it's like two years out, I don't mind. But I'm really getting tired, of, like, trying to keep a game hype for like five years. Like, yeah, they show their stuff way too it. early. It's just like I rather than just wait and show something that's like more closer. Because like, all right, you're hyping this to the PS5. Is this going to be out like before the PS6 is about to come out? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so. But this is the different divisions. We don't know how long they've been working on it. Yeah. Because um, they've got the division that's working on 7 and then this one. I think there's another division, but I don't know what they're working on. Well, we're um, quick. And with 7, was like the same director that did four, like 15, Kingdom Hearts, and 7. I'm just like, Jesus. He's just yeah. like, you're trying to juggle three major games. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. But like, the, story te- like, the, the cinematic storytelling in 14 is very good. So I it think is. that mm-hmm. part will be very strong in this game, whereas it was one of the weakest elements in 15. Mm-hmm. Let's Stand save that. On. Let's save that debate for another time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so well, okay. I'm excited. I, I hope they're much further along, where maybe they might aim for a 2021 or early 22 to release. That's my hope. Because I guess a very, that was a surprisingly long trailer, and there was a lot in there. 2021 is already a pretty packed year. I think they should try for 22. Well, the Jap- I will quit. The Japanese games are uh, Japanese games. Because Final Fantasy does well in the West, but you look at a lot of Japanese games, they come out like December or January, like some big ones. Like, they don't yeah. aim for like that October, November window like <clears> the West does, so they're usually a little different. Final Fantasy's different. We'll, yeah, we'll see. 15, that. I think, was November. What? 15, I think, was November. I, I, I stopped myself because Final Fantasy is like one of the few, like, series that does really, really well in the West. Yeah, Final Fantasy is mm-hmm. different. But, like, Yakuza, even though it has a cult following, it's, it's subtitled, you know, it has a. a, a it's a more of a unique following than, let's say, like a, a triple A, like a mainstream Western game. Like, uh, and Final uh, Fantasy is like one of the exceptions that I have. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's move on yeah. into Spider Man. Uh, so we got a yes. uh, better look that at Miles great. Morales, Spider Man. I'll, I'll let Justin, I'll let Justin, I'll let Justin, talk about Justin it. take over this one. <laughs> Looks great. So, yeah, at first, right. like, they, <laughs> I mean, they kind of, you know, they slowed it down. They showed more, like, of the, the nice, like, character interactions. I love that they confirmed Yankees in there. Um, you know, his mom's like running for office, which is a interesting take. I don't think she's ever done that in the comics. No, but, she's a nurse. Yeah, but I mean, she was in this too before. I know she was a teacher, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, um, but I like it from a storytelling angle because it makes her a threat. You know, like that's definitely going to play into the overall story. Uh, yeah. Like the people seem to be targeting her. It's gonna and so suck it makes when it personal. Venom kills her. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if they'll kill her because they already killed his dad. Nah, but, it's, it's it's dudes writing a, a female comic book uh, character. They're probably gonna kill her. Yeah. Well, to be her. fair, the the game's like story has kind of gone in its own unique direction. So <clears> it has. I think anything's possible. Yeah. I mean, but I'm the fact that she's Peter a politician been killed randomly, and Miles is taken over. They might coexist, but we'll see. They do. Right. I think Peter's just like gone on holiday or something right now. Maybe he's but, on the West Coast Avengers. Yeah. Supposedly the the Spider Man. That was a good Easter egg. <laughs> supposedly the Spider Man in the Avengers game is a different one. Um, so but anyway. Oh no, I meant like in the original Spider Man game, he mentions the West Coast of. No, I know. Yeah. So. And everyone thought that meant that he was going to be in the Avengers game that had already been announced, but yeah. Um. But yeah, like I thought it was a little weird when like they kind of showed this like more more slow, nice like character moment, and then it just cut and like went to you know a a, a person talking. But then they showed the actual gameplay trailer, and I was, like, just glued to the screen. We were doing a, um, a watch-along, and I was just like, shut up, guys. I'm watching this trailer. I don't care about you right now. <laughs> I honestly like that it did that, because, like, I thought a great part of the Spider-Man game was the story. Like, I enjoyed the yeah. moments of Peter's daily life and just learning more of it. I'll no, I loved it. I'm just saying, like, it was, it was, it was, it cut very suddenly. That was, that was the thing I had. Yeah. Um. But, like, the gameplay looks great. Like, I love that they're yes. playing up his electric powers uh, because that is a big part of what makes him different. Um, he seems a little overpowered in that regard. Like, in the comics, <laughs> his, uh, his he Venom is Blast... He's overpowered in, his, in Spider-Man PS4. Well, what are you talking about? that's true, too. But the insane shit people do in that game. <laughs> um, in the comics, his Venom Blast is, like, kind of... It's not a cooldown. Um... And in this, it seems like it fills very quickly, and it, like, does like, big explosions, and... But, like, I like that he's more aerial. Like, that definitely seems like they're differentiating his playstyle. Um, the new threat is interesting. I don't necessarily care about, like, <clears throat> purple robots versus red robots. Um, well, you don't want more I know robots? they're not robots, but they look, like, cybernetic, you know? Well, real quick, they kind of hide at the main villain, the ending boss, you know, in the original last spider-man game and the trailers and the lead up to it that's so there, true it might be like a similar thing where we don't know who the true final boss are. yeah oh, these are the spider-man. factions but it's not the actual like villain yeah lame ass c villain yeah um that yeah that's a good point i i think there's i think there's definitely a lot more to learn about this game um and i also think it's interesting that the ultimate edition of this game includes a remastered version of the original game uh, with, like, you know, the same tech running it, so it's got all the seamless uh, transitions, like no loading times, all that stuff. It's got the ray tracing. And a few new suits, which is interesting. Ray tracing! Yes, ray tracing. <laughs> oh, so, puddles! Of puddles course, everywhere! But I also, I think I was reading <laughs> The puddle that tech the, is a lot better in this. <laughs> no, did you notice, like, the first thing in that trailer was, like... The snow looked good. I can't yeah. lie. <laughs> like Miles and Genki walking the down the street, it just and awesome. like those ray traced puddles were just for like front and center. <laughs> but oh, real quick, you know, I, I just realized this. You know, one of the biggest games that kicked off the PS4 was Infamous Sucker Punch, and now the biggest game is going to kick off the PS5 is another Sucker Punch game. So this is Insomniac. <laughs> Oh shit! You're right. Everybody confuses them. Don't feel bad. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody oh, confuses man, them. Oh man, I screwed yeah. up, and I'm a Sony fanboy. I should know better. <laughs> How dare you? Shame. That's why you're here. <laughs> well, um, no, I'm here to tell you that you should get that over Xbox, and then even though I own both companies now. <laughs> yeah. Like one share each. <laughs> I own both systems, so you're welcome. <laughs> I've helped your net worth. Um, Good. But. Yeah, so I, the original game is coming, uh, but I've also read some reports saying that like the PS4 version has a free PS5 upgrade, so I'm kind of holding off on pre-ordering this game because I'm not sure if I want the Ultimate Edition or not. I definitely want that PS5 version of the original game. You're gonna, you're gonna pre-order. I can solve this mystery right now, buddy. I know you're gonna. <laughs> I, do I, it. I agree, Ben. Like, I just Justin and Spider Man. It's just like, no. I'm, I'm gonna pre. I just don't know which like version. This, don't, don't pre-order. No, I mean the no, ultimate mission. No. Yeah, I know you're gonna do it, Justin. Yeah. Uh, I'll but, be right here with the receipts. Okay, here's here's the thing. <laughs> the reason I'm not yet is because like usually there's pre order bonuses, like retailer exclusive pre order bonuses. So I want to learn more about that stuff, and I want to see if there's anything different about the ah. ultimate edition, like any other added content, or if it's just 
The, it's going to add funky mode. The there first. <laughs> <laughs> and Dante from the Devil May Cry series. <laughs> um, or if it's just a remaster of the first game. Because if I already get that for free, then I'm not going to spend the extra money just for I that. I was reading up that is a, that on is the different question, editions like of this game. Yeah. And Fine. there's a different edition where it's uh, the launch edition, and that comes with extra suits. And it's kind of weird because I'm trying to find the ultimate uh, launch edition, which comes with the suits, and it's like the same cost as the ultimate edition. Uh, it's kind of weird. Like this, this launch of this game is kind of weird. Yeah, it's confusing because, like, also the trailer in the showcase said holiday 2020, but then immediately after the showcase, Zomniac tweeted out, "We're coming at launch on 11-12. <laughs> It's like, well, oh. I, and then it's holiday season. I mean, you know, Thanksgiving's like two weeks <clears throat> later. So yeah, but the showcase like... was a mess. They should have opened with the the console. It, it should say launch title because you want right. you want big names on launch. And they kind of clear. That was the only ne- that was the big negative of the conference. They didn't really were clear on that until like afterwards. Yeah, like, they should have I mean, opened with all the console information, and then yeah. every game from then or, there on end could have said. You know, available at launch eleven twelve or whatever. Yeah, it uh, well, could have I, been I, some I, kind of miscommunication with the companies or something. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, speaking of miscommunication, <laughs> just the it, whole free. It, it probably doesn't help. It's like um, this is a low defense of Sony, but it's what the pandemic. It's like, you know, it it, it was like a direct. You know, it's like I lo- I love the I I miss old E three conferences because it's just like yeah you know, stuff can go off the rail and just kind of fun that way, but. At least everyone's, like, in the building, so at least they're usually a little more coordinated with, like, phrases like, oh, we're actually coming out launch, not Christmas. So mm-hmm. it's like, so that way... Everything know, is virtual, so your communication has to be more yeah. on point, and they've kind of failed at that. Yeah. But yeah. then again, you're dealing with teams between Tokyo to... Uh, God, you know, so God speaking of uh, miscommunication, right. we have the uh, Harry Potter game. I'm out. Bye. I don't like that they're calling it the Harry Potter game because it's called Hogwarts Legacy. It has nothing to do with Harry Potter. He's not even alive yet. <laughs> it's the universe, though. I mean, it's like it's like calling Lord of the Rings universe. Well, I guess you call it Middle Earth, but it's like yeah. not calling it Middle Earth. You just call it something else. <laughs> so you call it Middle Earth Light. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's Harry Potter series. I mean, I'm repping my Quidditch shirt uh, in in honor of this game because um, <laughs> I'm excited. Let me put it this way. Um, I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan, but from a game perspective, it looks good. Like in terms of the premise, yeah. It's just unfortunately, and you know, this is a game podcast. We're not going to go down too far. But it's like with the political aspect, it's just a shame this wasn't made maybe like ten years ago, where probably more people probably would have enjoyed it. Yeah, there is a stigma around it. That's for yeah. sure. But like, I love this world. Like, it means a lot to me, and I'm not going to let anyone take that away. And so she had no involvement in the making of this game. Or the yeah, the, we have a new story about that. Yeah. I, I know um, about that, but since it's still like her world, I'm sure like I'd be shocked she got no. I just don't think it's fair that. to the people who made the game. Right. I mean, she definitely yeah. gets money for it, but so do a lot of other people. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's just a shame that it like it's just it's just kind of sad just how things have turned out because like you know she really portrayed a lot of fans and just her own views and I wish she just kept it personal and not be public about it. Yeah. It's or just not have those views at all because they're hateful and intolerant. Yeah, I, I, I go I agree with Ben on that one. Well, yeah. Like, at least to the point, like... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Your, your I, I, world, like, like your, your, what you're saying goes against no, everything you wrote. No, I'm not sorry. sorry no, I'm not Ben. I'm talking about everything she wrote goes against, like, what she's saying now. Like, I don't... It's just, like, complete... You know, just, it's just my... It's just dumbfounding. But anyway, that mm. being said, it's just... It's a shame that this is probably a game that is... It, I almost feel like it should have came out in 2010 and not mm-hmm. 2020. Yeah, it took too long. Yeah. And I think that's like this game leaked like two years ago. And they've been holding on to it. Like this I'm I'm almost certain this is the same trailer that leaked two years ago. Um, like for test audiences to try to see how they would like react to it. So like they've been very careful about the coverage of this game for that exact reason. And so I I mean I'm kinda proud of them for coming straight out and saying, like, hey, she had no involvement in the creation of this, like it's her property. You know that there will always yeah. be that tie, but like she didn't consult on it, she didn't write it, anything. This is no, our product. This is you know, there's a lot of talented people that went into making this. It's just a shame that they have to go to that extent. I know, and to separate yourself like, that it's much from the creator. Work, unfortunately, I mean, yeah, unless... yeah. 
Um, and I know Justin's not doing it, or this is not direct to anybody I know, but, like, if you are seriously, like, jumping through moral hoops to play the game, just buy the fucking game. Right. Just buy the fucking game, yeah, stop saying, I, well, I, I'll I... donate to a charity, I'll do this. Just buy the fucking game. <laughs> Nobody really should judge you for buying the game, because I even said, uh, hey, I'm happy that people are happy, but I don't want anything to do with anything <clears> so, Harry Potter related, including this To, to Ben's point, I just met him tonight, I love that, because it's like... Like, you know, or, you know, if you want to enjoy it, I'm not going to, like, it's your own life. It's not my, you know, I'm not going to get it. More so, I'm just not interested, but it's like, yeah. I think she's also, you know, a terrible person. It's like, you know, I'm done with it. Like That's you, probably you why they didn't have a consult on so the game. I'm done with it. But if you really <laughs> want to play it, you know, don't get wrapped up into it. Just play it. I mean, because, yeah. you know, not major, over one majority of the money is going to go to the guys that made it. And, that you know, they deserve, if it turns out as good as it looks, because let's be fair, it could be. High twelve, and it comes out, and it's a terrible game. But if it's end up being a good game, they deserve to at least get some recognition for making a good game. Yeah. So. All right, let's talk about and, the game now. At, yeah, at the end of the day, like I want, like <laughs> I just want more stuff in this is. universe. Like I've been saying for a while. Um, I think we actually had a charged up topic on this, where like I want like a TV show that just follows like totally new characters, and like each season is a year at Hogwarts. So it's like, you know, seven seasons, like following kids from the beginning through graduation. You want uh, the like on their magical in, adventures in Hogwarts. What if it's a game of service game? It might oh, be. It's, it's gonna, I think it's going to be a service game. It probably that would be. That would kill, oh, if the J.K. Rowling shit didn't kill it, that would ultimately kill it for me. I mean, but isn't, it, isn't it is, technically an MMO? Like, no, it's no. a single player open world yes. RPG. Yeah. I, thought, I swear to God, I thought it was... I think people have been no, making it's an MMO anymore. because it feels like it could be. Yeah. But that's the thing. is like, I want more information about it. Like, I really don't know what this game is from this trailer. It looks good. <clears> and, like, I'm excited to see this world and it, be in this world. It's basically just a kid at Hogwarts, but, it feels like. But it's it's your, uh, yeah. you set in the 1800s. It, you know, was, right. You know like, that. I know that you're, like, a, a fifth year... Uh, like, a new fifth year student who, like, uh, missed the, the Hogwarts admission or whatever... But, like, people discover you're magically gifted, so they bring you into Hogwarts late. Um, yeah. You're, like, basically a, a prodigy. But I don't really know anything else about the actual, oh, like, real, real story. Quick, fifth year. I know how to do shit. Real quick, Justin, if you want a, the best transfer high school student a journey, play Persona. All of them. Yeah, I figured it, you were either going to be about. talking about Persona or some anime. <laughs> don't, don't, um, let me, don't let me fly back to Jeff City right now for you mocking my series. <laughs> One of my favorite series. Hey, you're the one. That I would get on the, the plane over here right now. <laughs> you started. Do it. I dare you. Oh, <laughs> I'm lonely. That does. Um, I'm loading up the United Airlines. <laughs> but yeah, so like the thing is, we don't know a lot about this the the game itself. That's why we're spending a lot of time on the yeah. the stuff around it. Um, yeah, I know it's a fortune, but it takes place in the late 1800s. Uh, it's a totally original character. You create your own student. You like I said, you're a fifth year student starting off. <laughs> and you're exploring Hogwarts. Um, I hope that they put things like Quidditch in there and you can actually play that stuff because it's been in past games. It better be brutal. Yeah. People, students, students need to get No, I mean, like, I want to see violence because like, I can see I want to see people die. <laughs> yeah, no, it should be. People have died in Quidditch. medieval times. Let's go. Yeah. It's not medieval times. <laughs> That's not medieval times. It's not? <laughs> No. 1800s? Yeah, 1800s is not medieval. <laughs> You're thinking oh. of like 1000 AD. <laughs> You're well, they like... were still uncivilized people, and, you know, I could believe they were bludgeoned the industri- to death. It's the Industrial Revolution times. Huh? Let's yeah. get really technical. <laughs> I mean, electricity happened in like the early 1900s. Like, what Timeline's you... not real. It's all a myth. Anyways. All right. Hmm. Uh, okay. The point is, I'm excited. Okay, Chris. All right, let's move on and I don't into care about the, the non-Resident Evil Resident Evil game, Village. Oh no, the gosh. non-Resident Evil that 8 Resident good. Evil game. Like, I'm not into the series because I, I am not into horror games, but man, just it, it did look really good. Like, I'm mm-hmm. really interested to see how it turns out. It's all right. This definitely this play, takes place. that we saw last time. That oh, is really. true. It's just it's a very interesting it was concept. Similar, yeah. like, it looks, it's not it's the same like trailer. This is definitely the same village as Resident Evil 4 though. They even showed the merchant at the end. Yeah. So I was wondering not the, no, is this not a, a merchant? Is this a, that was not the merchant. So is this a whole new game? Is it kind of like a spin-off remake? No, it's a whole new game. It has Ethan in it from 7. Yeah. And Chris but is in But it takes there. place in that village. Yes. 
Yeah, because even the enemies were very similar to uh, Las Plagas from yeah. 4. Las Plagas, <coughs> as I channel my inner Mexicanness. This should uh, <laughs> this should make it even more modern how the whole virus is actually Corona. Like, All right, uh, moving on to Demo, Devil May Cry 5 <laughs> Special Edition. Yeah! <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Pull Ben's Devil Trigger. Oh, my oh, God. Man, don't Give do me, that. yes, playable Virgil. Fuck yeah. Thank you, Capcom. Oh, and I can't play it at all till later, but okay, that's fine. This is also going to be Capcom's a launch title, by like the it. way. It's going to be a digital-only launch title. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Which it's coming to. They want people to. They want you to buy the console to play the new version, <clears> but you could just yeah. It, it's it's old school sales tactic. I but it's think it's coming work. to current gen too, isn't it though? Huh? I think it's coming to current gen. It is, but at a later date. It oh, okay. gonna It's gonna hit the Series X and and PS4 first, uh, PS5 first, and then it'll come to Xbox One X and PS4 um, as like a DLC upgrade, or you can just buy the standalone package, which I will because I want to play as Virgil. Gotcha. Since it's no okay. longer on Game Pass, I might end up getting this. Yeah, I probably will too. Oh, it's super good. Although I I want to know if my save transfers over because I might just do the upgrade. Otherwise, it probably won't, dude. Because, like, if I can just get that new content in my existing save, I'd rather do that. Yeah, maybe it might. Uh, Who knows? So then after that, we have Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I called oh, it! I fucking God. called it in stream! So weird. So, no. alright. I, uh, I actually, I was going to, I was, like, jokingly watching, like, oh, this looks like a Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff. And it shows, I'm like, are you fucking serious? Yeah, Ben did the same thing. Shoutouts to Scott Cawthorn, uh, who, along with Toby, what's his last Toby name? Toby Fox. Fox. Yeah, shout out to both of them. One who had an orchestra for his game uh, play in Japan. <clears throat> the other one who is like the ultimate indie success story from having made like what four really cheap games that I mean like twelve. Yeah, he's literally so made tw- like I'm not even joking about that. I looked it up. It's like twelve or thirteen. Like yeah, that. and like Jeez. huge success. And now he's gonna have a PS5 launch title. That's fucking man is living. It's not a launch title. It's not launch, yeah. but. Well, he's having a game made on PS5. But he had a, a game that was shown during the PS5 showcase. Right. It's probably yeah, going to be on every system. I'm yeah. yeah. He doesn't need to make any more games. He probably has bank. Yeah, he's probably he's doing, doing it. Yeah. He's uh, probably a workaholic. You guys should watch the Honest trailers on Five Nights at Freddy. It's really funny. I'm looking forward to all the, the lore deep dives for this one as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> nah. Everybody except for Matt Pack, because he can go fuck himself. But um, yeah, the lore stuff was fun. Yeah, that's like the like the uh, most fun I've had with these Five Nights at Freddy's games is just watching YouTube lore videos. Yeah. Uh, purple guy, anyone? Okay, there was there was a frenzy for like a good two years for that mm-hmm. shit, and that was all in that shit. Yeah. Uh, they even made a book. Yeah, <laughs> it's so weird. Um, and then also we have a better look at the Demon Souls remaster. That looked great. <sighs> Oh. That looked really good. It was really fun was, with me and Ben talking about our like nostalgia it, of that game. Yeah. So, all right, I'll, I'll be up front. I, I haven't played the series besides, well, I played Bloodborne a bit. <clears throat> I'm really horrible at those type of games, but I respect them a Same. lot. Especially my good friend who loves the series, so I know a little bit. But it's like, I mean, I know I remember people playing Demon Souls and watching it back in the day. And I was looking at, wow, that looks so good and like very much more smooth in terms of the combat. Over the years, like it seems like they put a lot of. Heart well, yeah, into well, it's it. not from it's Blue Point Studios is doing a remake. Who's like they killed it with the Shadow Colossus remake. Yeah, they they like, what, do remakes really well. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was them. I, that's pretty. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, like when I see like you know I, I I think I was the cynical one and I apologize for that. Who was like, well, how do we really need next gen? I saw this. I'm like, oh, this is this is next gen with the lighting. Yeah, it's and very pretty. The shadows the graphics and graphics are and, just. Um, Mind blowing! Mm-hmm. Like seriously, yeah. it was I can't wait to see some of the like more horrifying enemies uh, in certain areas. And they showed off some um, of like the most iconic areas and bosses. Yeah, which is really is... cool. That tower knight, that huge ass knight. Oh my god! Yep, with the shield. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Now, cool. oh, real quick to you guys, since you have played it, from what you saw with the gameplay footage it showed, how does that compare to the original game? It, yeah. it looks, looks. I mean, like it, it looks. It carries about the same. Just it looks better. Yeah. It looks a lot more refined because I know that was the only issue. Like, it, it was the first one, so you always tried to be fair at the time. But it's like, 
obviously very janky when you compare it over time. How it's not as chunky, goes. but I would like to see what it looks like when the guy has over encumbrance on and just yeah, <laughs> fat yeah, rolling man. everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> but no, this looks really good. And Ben, let me talk to you after the podcast about content ideas. But I gotta go slice pizza. You're fine. Uh, all right. Is that evil? Oh, real quick though. To that point, um, I think that is a great launch title. Like that's, you know, obviously it is sp- and it isn't because people are gonna buy it and they're gonna be mad when they die. I all don't right. think no, so. No, that's fair. But I'm talking about two. I so this is like my business mind <clears throat> thinking because you know that's my background. It's like from a from a casual standpoint, you have the Spider-Man, which you know I, mean, I ain't saying that's a full casual game, but it's, it's a big name franchise that everyone recognizes. And you'll have, like, Call of Duty and NBA 2K coming out. So it's like, oh, okay, you know, people want to upgrade. They got that. But then you have, like, this hardcore gamer. It's like, oh, we're going to have Demon's Souls remastered and all that. And it's, and you show an awesome trailer. It's like, oh, I got to get that because I love the Dark Souls series. So here's the it's thing. Like, There's not a lot of, like, uh, high-profile launch titles that are, like, <laughs> it's exclusive. Not. It's like this and three other games. No, yeah. and that's the only negative I do see. Like, but then the downside of consoles now it's just almost like, do you get it just to be a true gamer, or are you get it because your friends are on it? You can use like a media center for your TV, and then yeah. you also have like a PC as well because it's like it's just a TV version of a PC basically at this point. Yeah, what the hell? But I think it's some... smart for them to do Demon Souls as a launch title because there's not a lot of other stuff. So people are more likely to play this, you know, remake uh, of an old game. Well, uh, also, one quick, uh, the one negative I do have with the PlayStation and Xbox, like, even the third-party support is going to be a little more limited until next year. Like, Cyberpunk is coming out in November, but the next-gen releases aren't until next year. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Unless you count PC. So it's like, okay, I'm going to go on PC because I can play on PC and I really want to well, play it the best version I can get, you know, as quickly yeah. as possible. I I'm, you done. Were gonna say I'm done. Yeah, if you want to talk, Ben, go ahead. <laughs> nah, I just think people are going to be real mad when they buy this because it looks cool, and then they die in the first area. I don't, which is supposed to. Okay, so but... here's the thing: I don't think that's going to happen because we are in such a different world. We have Demon Souls, Dark Souls one, two, and three, and then Those we have Bloodborne, so niche, though, and then we have dude. Sekiro. Bloodborne. Those all sell millions of copies, though. Each. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even no, say they're I, niche I, anymore. I get that, but that. I don't. I, I think on average you're gonna see more of like people who buy it. Well, I, I guess I'll buy this one because I don't have any other choice. Because like they don't. That's the only other exclusive choice. I guarantee you, people are gonna get so frustrated at this game because that's the kind of game it is. And some might like it. I guarantee you, more than not, people are gonna be pissed because like why I spent seventy dollars, which I'm not complaining about that. Uh, people will. To, uh, to, you're just not die gonna in complain about spending a hundred Canadian dollars on this thing. Well, I, I can't talk you about that because I'm so not screwed. Canadian. I'm talking about from the American <laughs> perspective. So yeah, so 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 this has cost me the console alone has cost me seven hundred and eleven dollars, and then each game yeah. has cost oh. me a uh, hundred and one dollars. Oh my god! Yeah, but to be fair, your money's not real. So to be fair, wow. I'm a living person. So <laughs> this is not South Park, even though that is really to be funny fair. Out of the Canadian game. dollar is more than worth than the American dollar. No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, actually, it's not, it's not, not the case. No. No. Oh. No. Well, whatever. America it's like eighty cents on the dollar. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Hold on. I just gotta do this real quick. Yeah. So one one Canadian dollar is only worth seventy six on the U S. Yeah, I know. And it's yeah. actually we're actually getting it cheaper than you guys. Like if you do the conversion rate. Yeah. It's like thirty dollars, which cheaper. is weird. Um, but still, it's still a lot of money. <laughs> well, uh, I remember. I think with the PlayStation Three, they screwed up. They like. Is like the U.S. price was six hundred, and then they did six hundred British pounds, which is like equivalent to like twelve hundred U.S. dollars. Yeah, like, that was Jesus. Crazy. Jesus. <laughs> it's like what the hell are you guys doing? And that's one of the reasons it did so horribly on launch. Because I mean, I was expecting the PS Five to be six hundred, so I was totally happy with that price. Like yeah, it was lower than I budgeted. They were mad. It was basically they were just playing chicken with Microsoft, and they oh, basically yeah. went first. That's what it became. Yeah. Well, I had a, uh, our friend Chris, Justin, I know, um, We I actually talked to him. It's like, you know, they probably don't make most of the money off the console. They're just trying to make it, like, more break-even. No, and it's all they, about the they, services sell them, they, they always sell them at a loss. Yeah, it's all about the Not services always. after that. And then, yeah. Yeah. The PS4, I think, at launch was sold at a profit. 
The what? PS4, PS3. One of those was sold at a profit. PS3 was not sold at a profit. Are you kidding me? Yeah, PS3 is like a thousand dollars to make. There's no way. It must have been PS4 then. I think PS4 was close to break even, but it was still a loss. But it was like yeah, pretty much every console launch is a loss. I think the Wii might have sold at a profit, but that was maybe. That's but that's like yeah. That's a very like Nintendo's model is very very different than the Xbox. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. PlayStation model. In terms of how they do everything. Although the Wii U was sold at a loss. A pretty substantial <laughs> loss, actually. <laughs> it's I think they sold so much they day. had to make a profit towards the end. I, so speaking of, co- uh, speaking of Nintendo consoles getting closer to death, 3DS production <laughs> has ended after nine years. Sad. <sighs> that was a good run. Yeah. I love my 3DS. It is funny, though, that I was like literally writing a, a video on 3DS games when I saw this news. So I'm like, well, gonna write that into the script. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Honestly, you should do a series. I mean, it's like you know the end of the era. <laughs> yeah. I'm. I mean, it's two videos because it's one of my top 14s. You know, they're always two parts. Why do Timmy go 14? So the handheld system has sold more our... than 75 million units since yeah. uh, its inception. Launch. Yep. It's a lot. I had, had yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah, 3DS was well, the weird. Sold this, but now <clears> the 3DS was a weird system. Because like it, it had a terrible launch. Oh, it was oh, yeah. bad. Like I was there for so it. I worked. I worked at Walmart in the electronics section and like set the mod for the games and stuff. Oh my god, I remember that years yeah. ago when you were there. Yeah, I mean it was in Kirksville, but still, um, like it was it was it was bad. Um, I didn't even get mine at launch because I saw how bad the launch was, and yeah. I mean I got it not long after. I'm a Nintendo fanboy. Let's be honest. Um, mm-hmm. That but, was me the PS3. That's, yeah, I'm in that boat. But they sold it for way too much money with no games. Yep. And then, oh, like, yeah. six months later, dropped it. Yep. That's when I bought it. Almost $100. Mm-hmm. Um, which I actually think is when I bought it, too, because I didn't get the Ambassador stuff. Uh, and to apologize to anyone that had already bought it, they gave them 10 NES and 10 Game Boy Advance <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah. Which apparently equal $90. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't bad for the G. I wish I got some of those GBA games. I mean, yeah, it's not bad because like those games did not come to Virtual Console. No, no, which is good because they did people to write it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like there was some there was some gems in there. Like I'm mad that Metro Fusion never came to Virtual Console. Yeah. Well, Game Boy Advance games at all. The only thing that you got was Super Nintendo uh, <sighs> and Genesis games on on it. When with the 3DS X with the new 3DS XL. There was Game Boy Color because I have uh, Oracle of Seasons yeah. and Ages on mine. Yeah, but I had a Game Boy Color. Uh, I that was like my childhood right there, so I loved it. Yeah. I actually didn't have a Game Boy Color. I it, got, I got uh, the Pokemon Gold one. You can see inside but, the Game but Boy. But the nice. 3DS, but the, but the 3DS as a terrible console at launch. But I think over the years it had. Uh, earn its weight in gold oh yeah with the sheer amount of titles just since the cover i mean shit the bravely default series like i said i don't know if you can ever port those games to switch or any of the console because of what they do with the ar camera in that game um you know the the two n64 zelda remakes um link to the past too technically like so many good amazing titles mm-hmm. um on that system uh and like shit that that's what held me over when the when the wii u games were coming out I have two 3DSs. I had I had three at one point. <laughs> oh, look at look at me looking at this privilege over here. The, the th- no, I'm just the 3DS like, that you know, I bought. I'm saying they had so many iterations of them. Like they had the regular 3DS, and they put out the XL, and then they put out the new 3DS. So it's like it did well enough that they. Yeah, that's when I on jumped it. on was the XL. I got the uh, the Link Between Worlds model, and then that one yeah. actually shorted out. Like it got rain damage, so they had to. Oh. Um, so I sent it in for repair. They sent me back a red one. I what? was not happy about that. Yeah, it was really lame. That's not okay. And then eventually, I ended up buying the uh, the uh, the new Nintendo 3DS, the mm-hmm. one that looks like uh, Super Nintendo, which is pretty cool. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. I tried to get the Samus Returns one, but my pre-order got canceled. <clears throat> I I still want a per. I still have my 3DS, and I still it's I still play it every now and then. Uh, I st- I still want to personally buy a new 2DS XL just because my current one is very beat up mm. from years of use and i would like a upgrade but now they're going stupid expensive because the news went yep fucking hate you all people there's 
but I'm sure I'll find one at some point. I mean, if not, I still have mine. It was eventually going to happen because the Switch is kind of like, it's like weird. It's like a DS and a Wii replacement. Yeah. Like it's, it's funny both. though because like every every generation they're like, oh, this thing isn't replacing the old thing. Like they did it with the DS. They're like, the Game Boy line is going to continue. The Nintendo DS is a third pillar. And then the Game Boy Advance was immediately killed. Yeah. Yep. And I then mean, the 3DS, they're like, well, the, Sw- we're g- the Switch isn't replacing the 3DS. We're going to have both, which is a terrible idea because it's a console and a handheld. But they said it. And then now, you know, oh, I guess Nintendo's three years like later. Windows. Oh, Windows 10 will replace Windows 8. It's going to replace Windows 8. You're going to be forced yeah. to get this shit. <laughs> so, yeah. And you're going to be forced to have horrible updates that destroys your computer. <laughs> But one exciting thing is my uh, my 3ds XL, like the Link Between Worlds one. I still have the box for it, so if it nice. does become a collector's item, like I'm gonna make bank on that thing. <laughs> I would keep it just to keep it, but that's just. I mean, I am like that. I I haven't sold it yet, but if There's it became expensive enough, for money. <laughs> I used to. I've gotten a lot better at keeping things. I'll say that. Oh, you're a hoarder now. You got a problem. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> kind of. I know. I just, I'm just no. Like, I, to, <laughs> actually, I have a 3DS related story. Um, so, like I said, I was recording a bunch of 3DS games, and oh. I was trying to find my hacked 3DS so I could record from that instead of having to get the ROMs. Um, so I grabbed this one off the off the shelf, my original 3DS XL, um, and I like f- searched for my power cord all over the room, plugged it in, turned it on, and I was like. What the heck? Like, did did my hacking, like, go away? Like, did the system update and it cleared it out or something? Like, this isn't hacked. Then I remembered that that was an original 3DS, not the new 3DS. So I looked all of the, like, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, wait, that's the wrong one. I have two. <laughs> so I looked all over the room again to try to find my new 3DS XL. And it was buried underneath, like, a stack of empty 3DS boxes. Because I have everything in a in a like a cartridge holder. Wow, you um, are a hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had stacked them up to to showcase my Skull Kid figure. But for some reason I put the three DS on the bottom of all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to pull it out from all of that and then plug it in and, and pull it up and it was it was hacked and it was fine. But like I spent like two days searching for this thing, not realizing that I had buried it. Like I do have a lot of stuff in there because I just don't have anywhere to put it all. Uh, so speaking of Nintendo, do you want to go over that mini direct? Oh yeah, I watched. That. I forgot about uh, that. I don't have it up here anywhere. Um, Monster Hunter. Yeah, the only thing, yeah, the only thing that matters is Monster Hunter. Yeah, yeah there's like, two Monster Hunter great, games. So that, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, which is like a traditional Monster Hunter game, but with like some new traversal elements. Yeah. The um, graphics look great. Too, it did. For, yeah. For, I mean, They're I didn't expect to be like. From world. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised. All right, let me put it this way because I have a Switch now too. I'm surprised it can handle it because I know World was. Oh no! Demanding. There's points where it can't. There's points where you watch the trailer, the frame rate just tanks. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious how they're gonna handle that when it, it's on release. I know it's like you know, trailer footage, obviously. So it's like they're going to probably make a lot of alterations until then. But it's like, even on PlayStation Four, even with the frame rate just <laughs> wow, World looks incredible in terms of just like presentation. Maybe they're prepping it for the pro. Oh, um, but then there was Monster Hunter Stories 2, uh, which I think is like a sequel to a 3DS game. Yes. That's like a traditional RPG, right? It's a visual yes. novel okay. with some stuff in there. It has RPG Pokemon it, elements. It, it really uh, felt like a Capcom conference because that seemed to be the height. Yeah. Height. <laughs> I mean, they followed the direct with the Monster Hunter direct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's other kind of stuff, was. but I already forgot. <laughs> That's yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, they didn't show Ori, a Bravely Ori Default 2 trailer, two. which is Yeah, annoying. there was that. I mean... Oh, that's true. Uh, let me put it this way. It was a good direct for game... If you didn't have anything else to play on at all, it was a good direct for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like... Outside of Monson. Like, Monson was like the big news, and it was just like, here's yeah. other stuff that has been out for a while, but if you don't have anything to play it on, now you can. So... I mean, it is really cool to see the Ori games coming, because like, those... I mean, no, those are I agree Microsoft games. Regard, yeah. That are coming the, to Switch, like that's cool. Yeah. I'm and never, the fact that that on for Ori two that they had it running at 60 FPS yeah. at launch. That game that's looks amazing. Great. 
Like, Considering how buggy <laughs> as fuck and how it ruined my experience yeah. playing the game the first time and how why I haven't touched it since then, uh, I will officially be a bitch and buy it again. Not buy it again. Buy it for the first time on Switch because that's where it belongs. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I always... I, I, you shake of, your fucking head at me, Tom. I shake my <laughs> head as much as I want. I own this fucking podcast. Real quick, I just want to say, true. I love... Power actually, trip. You know, in regards to console wars, I love seeing more games get ported because, like, people deserve to see mm-hmm. this game eventually. Like, yeah, I don't, I get, I get how it's a business and all that, you know. But it's like when I see like, like Horizon Zero Dawn coming to PC, it's like I'm glad more people get to experience this world that I finally got to experience. Yeah, I get so. selfish to say that your game shouldn't go anywhere else. Yeah, I understand I mean, it with I Nintendo games game, because like, like they like build things for, for their Nintendo's games, except for Nintendo. Well, games. no. I- like I'm not trying to be a fanboy here, but I understand it in their case because they make the games for their the capabilities of their console. A lot of times, they're not possible on other systems. So, uh, real quick, I want I want to counter to Justin's point. I agree with like 3DS, obviously, because that that whole architecture. But like the Switch, you know, outside unless you made all motion control, I mean that system is going to be very portable. You know, that's the one thing I've seen in the last like five years used to be each console was very unique in terms of the architecture like you know the cell and you go way back to xbox and all that same thing now it's last like, processing everyone just wants basically <laughs> a pc and a console box because yeah. it's just easier to program that way right which i get too because programming is so complicated now because used to be a game was like you can make a game in less than yeah, a year like an aa game now it takes like <clears> five years because of just sliding alone would take a year alone to get that right. All right. So, Except in Unreal Engine 5 or whatever. Speaking oh, of Beautiful. bad PC of games not coming to PC. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go into this. Uh, what is this? Demon Souls? Like going to Demon Souls. I, ga- I gave... I, I threw a fastball right down the middle, and you swung and missed. You we talked slow. about that already. It, it, we already. If you have a controller... We already fun, said uh, it's not coming to PC. No, I thought we were going to go before into it. My bad. Okay. We didn't delete it from the thing. Okay. No, we. I mean, <laughs> we said it earlier in the show that like it's not coming to PC. It's going to only be on PS5. So is that real? Cause yes, I, it is real. I, okay. There's a typo. They send, took down the they, they took down the trailer as soon a little afterwards. Yeah. Send that to uh, whatever information you find. Can you send that to Justin, so then we can send it to our friend and just send the Kotaku article. I feel like that's an announcement that's still to come, but Sony has it, an exclusive launch window, and yeah, so they didn't want it getting like, out. It'd be like what they've done recently with Horizon, which I'm really shocked that's coming to PC, by the way, because they made it. Like, yeah. It's a Sony-owned studio, but it might be like one of those. It might be like in the PlayStation 5 for like two years, and they then port it. Right. Like, but like Final Fantasy 16, for example, that, that said console exclusive, but it's a timed exclusive. Yeah. yeah, that one well, actually uh, said timed exclusive, though. It didn't in the trailer. Oh, it's, actually, it's, At the end, it did. Like, they said at the beginning that this is running on not PS, like not PlayStation. It's running a is run- simulation on PS5. No, no, no. PC. Yeah. I, it's it's PS4, PS5 console exclusive. I know. It's, it's coming to PC. But it's a timed exclusive before it goes to Xbox also. Yeah, but this is... Well, this quick. is, we're, this we're, is right here. They say they talked to a rep, and he replied, it's just PS5. So, all right, hmm. I actually think you're right, and not Justin. I think it'd be like Persona, because that's made by Atlas. How dare you? They're not tied to anyone, in theory. But it's like Persona 5 is just PlayStation. I'm 5. just telling you what the, the, the people are I'm saying. I'm with him. No, no. I, I actually I think it's going to be like, are we going to put it only on PS5 for console? But if you don't have PS5, then you can get it on PC. Because like, it's like the Windows versus I'm just telling you, this Xbox is what argument, Sony so. says. So... Until they say otherwise, it's only a PlayStation Five game. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they're right, Justin. I think it's gonna be Bloodborne didn't come until they say That's until true. they say otherwise. Yeah. All right. I mean, I personally don't care. And like Shadow of the Colossus was also All a right. blue point thing. Real quick, and that was PS4. So real quick, I just want to say this, and this is where this is gonna be a quick console war. Not much further. If you had to pick between Xbox and PlayStation. I usually pick PlayStation because almost every like Xbox comes to PC, maybe minus a couple of series. Like mm-hmm. Halo. How do you understand Halo? Uh, Halo's on PC. But it's like, you know, and until recently when they did a few ports, like, you know, Detroit and Horizon, it's like they had a lot more major AAA first party exclusives yeah. than Xbox. So it's like, it's better to almost get like a PlayStation and then a PC on top of that. Maybe you get a best of both worlds. 
outside obviously Nintendo, which is a different market in my opinion, but a market that's worthy. Also Although for Nintendo. multiplat, like Game Pass on Xbox, like the the console version has so many more games, the the value of that can't be understated. So like if you can pick up an Xbox cheap with a Game Pass subscription, you're set for most like third party games. And then also their first party games come out, but there's not nearly as many of those. Yeah. So I think it helps to have one. Like I'm, I'm, I mean, I got mine partially as a media PC what, for the basement. I don't, I don't know, man. Oh, That's sorry. Just, I, I, I went mm-hmm. to consoles. I just like my argument. It's almost like if if you can have a good PC, and I'm saying if you can do that, why get an Xbox on top of that All over right. PlayStation in terms of like first party content? Minus Nintendo. I think Nintendo. Has so I, much that it's worthy just buying. They're it. always Bud's got thing. an Xbox. That's why. Yeah. That's the only reason I can think of. Because crossplay is still not a thing for a lot of things. That's, that's why. true. No, don't get me wrong. Besides that, but it's like if you're like, don't have that element, which ironically Justin and I are in that boat because no one else really plays Xbox in our, in our circle. All right. Like, yeah. Uh, circle in Missouri. Well, Ben does. Move on. <laughs> uh, I'm cutting this last news story, and oh, go I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, talk about the question that's in the chat from Mike. Mike the TV, and he asks us, "What's the best handheld to console conversion?" Handheld to console conversion. Yeah, I'm gonna say Persona Four Golden. Oh that's, my, yes, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh mm. my god, <laughs> it's kind of a cop out though I'm because a it's a there, but it's a cop out wow. because it's a PS. Two game converted to a PS Vita and then converted back to console and PC. Hey, they could have fucked up the. It they converted to PC now, so yeah. it just like goes. Fuck, in you're making me think. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't no. think of that way. I can think of console to handheld. There's not many, right? Links. I I got one. I got one, and I don't like it that much, but it's it's. A, I think it's a good one. Okay. Uh, Link's Awakening. Uh, oh, that is a good one. Yeah. Well, I know. Uh, There's not many NBA of them. Uh, FIFA 19 on Switch. Not joking. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I've got one. Um, Talk about a bot series. On the reference of 3DS, uh, Kingdom Hearts Dream Dark Distance. Yeah, that's the, like, the only that's other one. That's a good one. one. I could think yeah. Yeah. Like, I actually... Oh, I no, think... no, no. I have another one. I have another one. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations 1. Oh, yeah, you're right about oh, that. Oh, yeah. All right. It was originally a 3DS game, which, by the way, it's amazing that's a 3DS game when you play it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which it's okay on console, but it's it's still it's. it's, it's I mean, Dream oh, Drop Distance oh, is the same way. I, I have a good one. Um, uh, well, it was from it was from um, handheld to console, but Gravity Rush was uh, transferred pretty well for the PlayStation series. That's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Oh, about. sorry, I thought it was like vice versa. But anyway, Gravity Rush. That's my answer. No, there's plenty of others, but. Uh, that was one of the few better ones is, uh, I can think of on top of my head. It's very yeah. tough. It is a, that is a tough topic. It is. Good job, Mike. <laughs> I just gave you two. It's not that hard. I mean, I'm just badass like that. Yeah, I think Ben's just a badass. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> you play Battle of the Grid this weekend? Fill my ego? Mm, mm. I only can fill your ego so much, okay? Okay. <laughs> uh, so Justin? Where yeah. Where can people find you? You can find me if you look for Zero Score on Twitter or YouTube or Twitch. Um, I've already talked enough about my 3DS video, but I got my emotes on Twitch, and they're real cool. They're adorable. Ooh. Yeah. Ben. Twitter.com slash Marvelous E for all the concerning the Marvelous One. I am 85% done with the Chun Li video. I just have the remaining parts of the Third Strike stuff to edit. Then I'm going to do voiceover, and I'm going to put it all together, and it's going to be a shit package, but it's going to be my shit package, <laughs> because I'm going to actually put content out. I My goal is either this week or next week. So, uh, for Chun-Li and Smash, uh, look for that soonish. Uh, I just got to get talk to somebody about a thumbnail. Um, and uh, twitch.tv slash Iggy2814. Uh, I'm officially making Sunday nights my second stream day. Okay. Uh, so we'll see how that goes, uh, <laughs> considering I'm usually exhausted from work, but hey, maybe I'll play something on the lighter end, or maybe I'll be insane and hey, let's just play Power Rangers because I don't know how to control my life. Um, but every <laughs> Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Sundays, it'll be at 8 Central Standard Time, a little bit later just because I get home later, I need to relax a little bit, uh, before I start. So look for those two days at twitch.tv slash Iggy2814. And, of course, uh, again, at Marvelous Iggy for all things related. And I guarantee you, uh, I hope you like the Chun-Li video when it comes out. 
And you can find. You guarantee us. You hope. Uh, okay. You done. You done. <laughs> you done. Snippy. Justin's never done. <laughs> it's true. It's 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 past my bedtime. I'm, That's a secret. I'm grumpy. <laughs> He's never done. Um, we went longer than usual. That's all. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, it was fun though. Thank you for having me. So you can find me on uh, Twitter as Kane Play Stuff. Also on Twitch as Kane Play Stuff. Um, haven't been streaming a whole lot recently. Just not feeling it. Um, you can email me Thomas at charshot.com. Uh, if you want to be a guest on one of our podcasts, we have a Destiny podcast and a wrestling podcast. So please email me. Let me know if you want to be on. Uh, and a Godzilla podcast. Well, you have a Godzilla podcast. The Godzilla. <laughs> pod- oh, I forgot to plug that. Oh shit! Yeah, go um, ahead. Plug it. Fuck. <laughs> oh my. Uh, atom- oh. Yeah, please um, Atomic me. Shot uh, podcast I do with my. God, I'm sorry, it's been a it's been a long day. Uh, <laughs> Atomic Shot podcast I do with me and my buddy Tyler. Uh, we are uh, we just last week. Uh, that just the most recent episode that came out was um, God, Godzilla All Monsters Attack. Ignore that one, not the show, but ignore the movie. Um, but then this this most recent one that came out is the strangest Godzilla movie of them all. The strangest foe. It's Godzilla versus Hedera. Godzilla meets pollution. Sentient trash back. Oh, monsters. I love Let's that go. movie. Uh, <laughs> and then the one coming up is a personal favorite of mine. The ones coming out next week is Godzilla versus Gigan. And uh, just to give a brief, I said this on the Atomic Shot podcast. I'm gonna say it here. Um, just to give a brief update, uh, we are four, three movies away from ending the Showa era. We will be taking a two week break. Uh, from it, uh, and then we will restart with the Heisei area with Godzilla Returns, uh, or Godzilla, aka Godzilla 1985. So, just to give y'all a warning, but uh, we're not there yet, but we're recording there. So, anybody who's listened, I appreciate you coming on for the journey. It's been really fun for me and Tyler to do this. We're not stopping, we're just gonna take a small break because I don't really want, I don't want to get burned out on Godzilla. I need at least a little two week break before I go back into watching those, the second generation of movies. Uh, but yeah, that's it for Atomic Shot. Sorry, real quick, Ben and Justin, can you like link me to that podcast eventually? Because I want to listen to that because I love yeah. Godzilla. Oh no! <laughs> ben doesn't want to admit it, but he honest, has the most. To to it, he has yeah. the most popular content on Godzilla the website. Is. So yeah, Ben Ben doesn't like people actually listening to the things he makes. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Because I'm ben, trash. That's why. Ben, trust me. I, me and my uh, good friend, our, our <gasps> Justin and I, friend Chris, and some others from high school, we love Godzilla. So we talked about that crap all the time. All right. So I can't wait to hear your thoughts. So. Cool. Uh, so that's going to be it for the show tonight. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Enjoy your games. See you next week. Thank you. Wash your hands. <laughs>